Oh, hello, hello, guys. What's happening? Happy Wednesday slash Thursday. Technically Thursday for the first man on the on the peg there. Oh, let's see. Good evening and good morning. We've got uh, Mr. Nog says, Cav, did he give a reason, uh, Michael? Did he say anything why? I'm assuming maybe because he's got a rest. Maybe there's a recovery process for, you know, that whole problem. Oh, that's a shame, though, if he's not going to race in the tour. Matt 15 says hello and everyone in chat. And Cliff says trying to figure out what, what not to wear, I assume. <laughs> right? Uh, Stefan says, good evening, Mike and fellow modelers. Hope everyone has a good couple of weeks. Has had a good couple of weeks? Yeah. Summertime in the north. Let everybody roll in. It's always uh, a little bit quiet during the summer. So we'll let people kind of take their time. Cruise on in. He wasn't picked by the team. Okay. <laughs> I've not paid attention. I did watch uh, the last few stages of the, the Dauphiné. Um, you know, Primus Ro Rodlich, uh, you know, did his thing. So, yeah. All right. <laughs> Makes no sense, but I don't know what that would be. Uh, maybe they're not going after sprint points. Maybe it's a GC team or something. I don't know by the team maybe there's animosity inside the team i don't know that's an interesting conversation maybe they just felt he wouldn't be ready in time because coming off of that championship would have been would have would have taken its toll i don't know hmm. interessante interessante so yeah today be wednesday uh up here in portland oregon it is sun is shining and i got a little bit lucky with the the stream times uh as far as the schedule but uh Hello, Paul. Well, you know, we had <laughs> our first summer. Woo! It was, uh, to the non-English uh, users, it was 38 degrees Celsius on Sunday, 35 on Monday. So, which was a 99 and a 95. And then thankfully it just popped and went away. There's a little bit of like, I guess, a high pressure dome over Portland. And it kind of cracked real quick and left. And so we're back to normal temperatures. It's a beautiful day today, as you can see behind me. Right there. <laughs> Over there. Also got the new camera, uh, another camera or the old camera stuff's in front of it. So the iMac, if you guys haven't paid attention, I've got a new computer. Uh, Bryn says he's only here for an hour early start tomorrow. Okay, sweet. It's good to see you. And I enjoyed your post recently, 2FS modeling. You got some nice photography and it's always impressive when you realize <laughs> tiny little end scale stuff. Yeah, it's pretty great, great. 160th or something like that. That's getting up there in those numbers. That is for damn sure. Uh, lots to do today. That is for sure. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk about the new setup a little bit. I'll let everybody roll in here. It's just getting kind of people kind of coming in. The palette cam is a real winner. Yeah. So I've been able to kind of create a, a double scenario of uh, we're gonna do some airbrushing today. I think I'll do that first because I was kind of set up for that a little bit. Uh, we'll do some airbrushing, some primer today. I don't know how far we'll get on the P61. Uh, these initial stages are always, you know, airbrushing and, air, you know, full thing and, and the whole deal. Uh, but I have made some decisions regarding what we're going to do with this particular project. I kind of changed things up a smidge. Um, but I did get the gear bait, uh, the gear doors on, uh, all that stuff. It's been, it's been prepped enough for what we're going to do with it. I'm not going to take this any further. Um, this is such a, I don't like to talk <laughs> negatively of companies, but this is not a very nice kit. It's going to take a muscle amount of work to get this thing, you know, competitive, if you will. And I'm, I don't have the, the moxie <laughs> for this guy. Uh, I'll wait for another better P61 down the road. Uh, maybe do a great wall one down the future again. But uh, for this project, this will be a painting mule, but we're going to take it pretty far. We're going to use it. Um, some stuff. We'll get into this when people roll in a little bit lighter. Uh, but what do we got here? So it says, hi, I'll just, uh, let's see. Thanks. You're welcome. Hi, praise. Oh, you're welcome, Brim. That's good stuff, man. No, it's really cool. I like your little, your little wall mount, your little light setup. You guys should follow 2FS modeling on Instagram. Uh, he does really cool, really small end gauge uh, railroad stuff, uh, which is what twice as small as HO basically more or less. Um, pretty cool. It's a cool little black little thing that you did. Uh, Arno says, hello. Uh, glad to join live tonight. Welcome, Arno. Good to see you, bud. Jim Clark says, eager to see what you do with OD over gray. 
Yeah, probably. I don't know how far we're going to get today, Jim. Uh, we'll, we might barely get through some zinc chromate, to be truthful. Um, because you guys are also, by the way, just to remind everybody, you're watching a one-to-one -one show. So there's no edited stuff. But to get this all primed, um, OD over, but we have to do some chipping with the zinc over the, over the metallics first. So we're going we're gonna to work through some stages. Uh, we'll see how far we get. Uh, and I also have the Tempest on hand. Uh, to do some oil work and stuff but what i was talking about earlier is most if you don't know if you're not on patreon or whatnot uh or don't follow me on instagram which you should anyway so fix that problem please <laughs> um uh new computer so as i as i mentioned to you oh, you guys are up here that's the other thing the camera's now up here because <laughs> i used to looking at this guy you guys are up there um so as i've mentioned before uh i'm i'm switching switch the stream to twice a month the purpose of the main purpose of is to buy time to do edited content of the 66 previous stream at three hours a pop. You do the math. It's probably 200 plus hours of, of stuff, film, um, plus a couple other stuff I had done. So I wanted to start getting into that. My previous uh, iMac was a 2012 version. And as soon as I started loaded in the videos, it said, no, 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 no. You, you take that big thing away from me. <laughs> Go away. So I had to recalculate some stuff um had to uh redo some some elements and then i went through ebay and purchased a really good basically brand new uh modern day m1 chip imac so that's why the camera that was a bonus i didn't actually expect that but this is a 1080p webcam from apple this is their newest webcam so it actually works pretty good everybody says it looks nice and crispy sharp which is i'm fine with that so then what i did was i took the old face camera and pointed at the desk so now you're going to have it's actually the it's actually the third one down here. This is this is the phone camera, and then you've got the the, the desk camera now. Basically, uh, what I can do with it though is it's on a mount right now that's a little bit higher up because I think for airbrushing we're going to need a little pan away. The problem with web cameras is they're non zooms, so they, this these won't neither of these will zoom in. So I have to kind of move the computer a little closer. It's it's a broader. So you can see you can see more of my desk and surroundings. Um, the color to me is slightly different, a little bit shifted in terms of the Apple, how, how it does the color. Um, but right now I have this dude uh, on a mount, a little bit, you know, six inch, it's old mount. I can unscrew that and I can clip it down and move this uh, camera way down to the desk when we do the OPR. And now you're going to get a what, what, little palette camera so you can see my, my oil paint palette up close while I'm working. So I think that's pretty cool. I think you guys will love that. Patreon dudes have already got the first video of the new setup. So I'm, I'm hoping this is the way to go for now. And as I, and as I mentioned last time, um, rumor has it iOS 16 for the iPhones uh, will have an, a native web, web camera function to it. So that'll be pretty cool. Uh, but Dave Cree says evening, Mike and all. And then Corey's here afternoon. Good morning, Jimmy Jammers coach on the clock. No Wally word today. That's nice. Old uh, George. Hello, brother. <laughs> George, I've been waiting for you to roll in for like two years, dude, because you started talking about OPR uh, on, a, on a podcast maybe a month ago, George. I can't remember exactly. I heard it. I caught it and, and I wanted to help. And, and I'd hoped uh, last Mecca stream you would have rolled through. But we'll see if we can help you out, because I know you were you were you were struggling a little bit on your on your uh, macro stuff there with the OPR. And I wanted to see if I could help out a little bit. Um, so we'll do some OPR a little bit later in the stream. Uh, probably, like I said, we'll do a little bit of airbrushing first. Um, and then what else? Let me see. Actually, I got to get the mic out of the, the chat way so I can read you guys. Hold on a second. Still slightly adjusting a little bit. Yeah, I'm a, I, I, I think the camera interprets a little yellow. Um, but that's because I'm in a room with two open windows and the fluorescent. And I don't think the... I thought this camera did a better job of the colors of my face and all that stuff, even though my skin tone looks pretty good. And obviously I'm wearing a yellow shirt. The walls and the, the surroundings look more yellowish to me as well, Corey. I see that too. I, I looked for it for like a week of some sort of a, it's non-adjustable. So I can't do anything to focus or change colors. Um, I can change the lighting around a little bit, but I need the fluorescent for the desk lamp for this stuff. Um, and then I'm in a box window of glass, um, but I am moving though. I will say that too, that is also coming up in a month. Um, so probably a couple more streams in this setup. And then in August, we'll be doing a new, probably a new location setup across the river. No, no worries, George. Yeah, I was hoping maybe you'd roll through last Mecca stream two weeks ago and, and maybe we'll be able to help because I did OPR the whole time. So, but I mean, obviously those videos are there for you to, you know, hopefully get some, get some information from. Um, do your chores, kids. Yeah, have a good stream. Thank you, Corey. Um, sexy screen layout. <laughs> right. 
Yeah, so 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 Jeff says sexy screen loud. I think what I'm gonna do to you, Jeffrey, is um I'm gonna make let's let's do the debut of what we're Jeff, what, what we're doing uh, at the end of the stream instead of at the beginning of the stream, because I don't want to get kicked off aircraft and then do what we're talking about and then come back and put the air. So let's get all this stuff through for the first couple hours and then towards the end of the stream, if you guys are still hanging out with me, we'll do a little special um preview of what's coming. Uh, something big has arrived. <laughs> literal and figuratively so yeah i think that's what i'll do jeff so it'll probably be what's at noon here so 3 p.m so probably 6 p.m ish 5 5 30 ish I'll, I'll i'll circle back around about a half hour before the stream ends uh and we'll, i'll pull the i'll pull the stuff over here and we'll share what's going on hello drugo uh just finished the build of the looks very glad to complete it for painting wow you're moving fast bud you literally just finished your sherman nikolai <laughs> Privet, good to see you welcome welcome uh, probably Corey. Yeah, I'm usually I every time I try to do two hours, Corey, it's always three hours. So this is it's a three hour stream, bro. That's I gave up on that. Even when I do short videos on Patreon, it's you know, 20 minutes is 40 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we've got a we got a big announcement at the end of the stream in terms of a new project that has come across uh thanks to Mr. Jeff Longman in chat. Um and we'll we'll debut that here later uh in the show. Um but let's see, well, we're a little bit early, letting people roll in a little bit. And if you're new to the stream, welcome. Um, this is technically, no, I'm not gonna do a first or second season, but this is technically the first show of year two. I did my first stream on June 24th, 2021. So it's the 29th of June, 2022. So this is technically the first stream of the second year I've been doing this. Um, so it's nice to have a new setup or at least a, an updated setup. So that's kind of always, um, I did an interview with the with the Build Sideways guys last night, and we talked a little bit about always seeking improvements and stuff, and, and always making little improvements here and there. Uh, I'm happy that the iMac, besides having an M1 and can, can edit videos, technically that's the whole point. <laughs> uh, the new camera gave me a third camera without ever you know really trying, so that's pretty sweet. Uh, nice little bonus. Um, weather's not bad here. It's it's like I said, we had a little bit of a heat wave over the weekend in the in the high 30 Celsius, uh, almost 100 Fahrenheit. I think it just tickled 100 depending on what part of the city you're in it's just and that's unusual because we were 65 degrees four days prior so that wasn't like a fun transition for us <laughs> we're like whoa what are you doing bro <laughs> come on don't be a dick um but yeah steve jones says hello hello fellow models from around the world how are you steve and marino there you are bud how are you brother um can't reach you. asf <laughs> episode 60 they haven't been doing models for a while i remember when you're on episode two um i have to read i think getting close my eyeballs are blurry today i'm overworking my 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 jimmy jams up here um as i'm just gonna call you as def i don't know how to say your thing but uh your screen name but thanks bro uh yeah we talked a little bit about that uh on the built sideways i don't know when that interview or it wasn't an interview it was just i was hanging with the boys um they invited me on to, to hang out with them for their also first episode year two for built sideways podcast so that uh, i did a little chat with them last night um, but we'll talk about everything regarding that scenario at the end of this stream. I think that'll be fun. Um, cause I'm, what it may do is I may end up switching next stream subject matter to that just to kind of get it going. And because it's kind of new and fresh and exciting, we might do that. Cause it's also going to compare it. It'll might be a dual stream next, next time, actually kind of subject matter. Uh, we'll talk, we'll see why. Thank you, Paul. It's been a good year hanging out with RSP. Absolutely. Yeah, I think we did some things, you know, I mean, I, I think there's some accomplishments in terms of I know the book shit's a mess has been for a while, <laughs> still mired in the bullshit. We're still trying to get everything out on time. Um, not much to report new in the last couple of weeks since the last I talked. Tank Art 2 and SM4 are still the ones coming uh, right up next. And then as soon as those pop, we should be able to get everything done by the end of August and everybody should have all the pre-orders done by the end of the summer. So that's kind of still the end game. It's on the website in terms of when you click on your pre-orders. Um, I'm going to keep that steady for now. No real newsletters until I have something firm. And I'm just waiting for the gentleman I'm talking to to just make a decision. <laughs> just I have to be really patient with this. And it's driving me insane. But we're here today to, to, to mellow the insanity. Um, so that said, let's talk P61 for a minute. And what we're going to do, um, and like, and, and I will say, let me just show you real quick what we will do later, because uh, we'll do some OPR. Uh, if you recall, we have the, the 70 second Tempest. So they're both 70 second scale. If again, if you're new, welcome, uh, please hit the like. And, and if you think you like the content, all the good stuff, do subscribe, do your chores, boys. 
You know the rules. Everything's in the description down below. Books, Patreon, YouTube. Uh, click the notification all thing. If you need tips on how to use YouTube better, because if you don't know, and I've mentioned this in most of the streams now, in your little settings window down there, you'll see a little rectangle. It says theater mode. And if you want to move the chat from which typically is probably on the right side of your screens, you can move. If you're on a phone, it'll be below anyway. But uh, if you're reading it horizontal, but if your phone's if your phone's wait, vertical, if your phone's sideways, you can move the chat out of the way. But on a desktop, in theater mode, it'll move the chat below the picture window, and that'll open up a little bit bigger. If you don't know how to do that, again, it's a little square icon on, on your on your menu there under the slider bar. Um, and also 1080p, that's the other setting you want to make sure you're always on in YouTube with us, is, is click the little gear, go up to 1080p, uh, if you're not, because we output all this at 1080p for you guys. Uh, but yeah, Mr. Tempest Boy, um, I did a little, uh, I did a streaking video on, uh, for a technique series on Patreon uh, this week. Uh, and I use just a little bit of the Tempest Wing to show you some quick aircraft streaking. Uh, but we'll do some overall weathering on the bottom of this because it's already all set up and everything for that later in the stream. But this dude, this feller, Mr. P61, or Miss P61, I'm assuming she's a widow. <laughs> See what I did there. Yeah, the camera up here is a little different. I'm used to kind of staring because I'm reading the chat. So I have to remember it's not this guy. But yeah, and there's a little green light up there. So we're good. Um, Ghost Rider, hello. What do you got here? I just hope the 16 game, it's, it's eight on this one. Um, I'm not doing any 3D modeling. This is just basic video editing. Um, and, and, and just you have to understand, guys, it was a 10-year-old iMac. So anything that this machine can do is a 10-year brand new technology. It's, it's literally the Millennium Falcon at full warp drive compared to what I was used to. I mean, it opens Photoshop and I've timed this and I can't time it faster. In 4.1 seconds is it open Photoshop from, from clicking the PS logo on the button, open Photoshop in 4.1 seconds. Like, I don't have any problems, guys. <laughs> like, this isn't, I'm not worried, bro. I know you're concerned, thank you, but it's, it's not. The only time you're gonna need, and I did a lot of research on this, and in the Mac world, remember it's, it's what do they call that? The memory is different today. Computer memory is different. It's it's inline memory. Is that the right term? The 8, 16, and 32 settings uh, or options, it's a different than what it was because I had 128 gig of RAM on the old machine, but it's a different type of, of RAM memory. This new tech memory is totally different. So to stress out the 8 gigs, I would have to probably realistically um, be editing an 8K video or rendering an 8K video, and we're, we're nowhere near that. That would stress this one out a little bit. Um, but the eight gigs of RAM on the on the test that I'll run on on uh, Premiere and DaVinci Resolve standard video editing 1080p and 4K, there, it barely hiccups. Like you won't see anything. In fact, when I move stuff around in the book layouts, which is the critical part of the entire machine, which is it's really its true power, uh, when I move my InDesign layouts at full loaded images, in other words, your your images are linked, the high res photos are in the layouts on the computer. When I move that around on the on the computer screen in the old machine, it would it would it would hiccup or hesitate, and you know trying to get work done is it becomes a problem. This one just it's just like woo, <laughs> so nice. It's a whole new world, man. I'm not worried. And again, this is this is you know this is this is I did a clean install. Uh, what else did I do? Not do a time machine backup on this one. Kyle, hello, brother. I see you. Um, didn't do a didn't do any time machine backups on this guy. Did a pure clean install. Downloaded everything fresh from Adobe. So also remember too, by the way, because I do have a description to that. That's how you have to do this today. Um, their stuff is, is geared towards the current M1 status stuff. So I was trying to use 2022 versions of Adobe software because they continually update you on old. It just doesn't work anymore. So now I'm like back in the, in the, back in the roof. <laughs> so we're there. What's up, Mark? How are you, bud? Good to see you. Dan Donat said, says, uh, what do we got there? Uh, when are you waking my neighbors going to suss that ice cream van? Chimes playing Yankee Doodle Dandy. What are you doing? Is it you talking the background music? That's the lo-fi. Switch it up. It's on a loop. It does that. That's just so I don't have any copyright claims against uh, all the Spotify stuff. Uh, most of the old streams with the Spotify had uh, um, you get a copyright claim, not a strike, a claim. It doesn't do anything, but it's just it just pain in the butt. They, it demonetizes everything. So I stopped dealing with that. And I wrote to StreamYard to say, hey, you need to add more music. People are bitching. Um, book shit might be a mess, but I'm psyched for OPR and, and HSC. Thank you, George. Uh, yeah, so there we go. Let's get into this. Pietro, hello. So let me talk about the P61 um, as I get sidetracked easily. I apologize. Um, that's okay. 
So what I'm going to do with this guy is first off, it's upside down because I'm just going to paint the belly first. Um, I have some primer, I have a bunch of, I have some primers, I have some metallics, and then I've got some, some zinc chromate to start. If we get further than that in the first two hours, you know, we'll see how this goes. Um, it's a much bigger surface area, even, even, even though it's a uh, 70 second scale, it's, it's sizable for stream painting, you know, live one-to-one -one painting kind of scenario. Um, I'm going to split this bird down in half. We're going to do half of it OD over gray, and we're going to do half of it in the black night fighter skin. So that's the big change for this. Uh, and the reason I'm doing that is because as I was finishing all the bits and pieces for at least putting the gear doors in and everything like that and, and sanding this thing, um, you know, put the flaps uh, on the end of it or whatever they are, the ailerons. Um, it's just a, it's a, it's hard not to use. It's a, it's not a very good kit. Um, it's not worth my time to do that to this guy. Um, so I'm gonna, um, got a text message and it's, didn't, hopefully that didn't interrupt anything. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna split this down the middle, down the center line. Um, okay, girl, you need to go away. <laughs> Um, so we'll do, we'll do an OD for half. I haven't decided which half yet, but we'll do it right down the middle. We'll do a black night fighter on one side and we'll do an, an OD over gray on the other side. Uh, that's not going to change anything overall. Uh, just the fact that this is going to be kind of a color switch. What we're going to do to start is we're going to lay down some, uh, well, I was going to say gray primer, but I will correct myself. So I'm going to use multiple brands of paint. Actually, we can probably switch out. Okay, just put that there. Okay. All right, so this would be kind of the normal view. Actually, I'll probably just get this out of here. So what we're going to have here, again, this this camera view here, this guy, <laughs> that's going to be a close-up on the desk as it gets into, so it's kind of an overhead view for now. So don't, the one you want to really be concerned about is this. But the beauty is I don't have to move this guy around too much more. And you know how I was always kind of having to switch and bumping into it. I can get it set up and get a little bit more comfortable. So hopefully that's that's something nice. Hello, Lou Fran. What's up, Chris? Sorry, brother. Your Mustang look beautiful, man. Have you got the wings on? Did we not get to the, your wings yet on that, Chris? You haven't, you haven't. <laughs> I'm just, I have to get used. I'm going to have to put a little post-it note that says, look here. Because um, it's just a tiny little black dot on the top edge of the computer. It's weird to look all the way back up there uh, after a year looking kind of whatever. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some gray primer. We're going to use Mission to start because it's the only primer I have in the studio. Uh, I'm going to add a little white to it. And we're going to try something here. This might be the next best thing since sliced bread. It, it might be a fail. It may actually be nothing. <laughs> Who knows? I have a few versions of metallics here. What do I have? I have a faded aluminum, a dura aluminum. I think I have a silver and a white aluminum. What I'm going to do, and you can probably guess, is I'm going to, I'm going to take my primer and I'm going to color it with metallic. I'm going to give it a hint of metallic. I don't normally like to paint my bases with metals. Metal paint to me does not look like metal, and that's contentious on some levels for sure, and we don't have a choice on other levels on another level, but I just need a little bit for the chipping purposes of it. So the, the end game for that will be what I'll do is I'll probably, with graphite of some form later on, do some bright work edge chipping on the exposed metal bits. But let's see how this goes. I've been wanting to try this a little bit. In, in other words, typically we would prime, you'd spray metallic, you'd spray, spray zinc chromate, you'd spray your top colors. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my metallic and primer into one layer of conversation and see how this goes. Just for shits and giggles, but it could be a little bit more of efficiency um, and one less layer to deal with. So there's there's that, that's what we're done. Um, I won't be the only one. Um, cool setup, thank you, Steve. Uh, thanks, man, they just went all last. Oh, sweet, okay. I will look forward to your posts. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I, I, I shared your F14 Tomcat stuff. Um, which is, which is, I think, top shelf, man. I think that's, you know, some of the best work out there right now. Um, just watched a great YouTube video on Metallics with Mission Models the other day. Uh, the fellow Paul Shack out of Yeah. And so to what we're talking about, this is not a natural metal finish. Don't get confused. Don't be sidetracked. Understand what we're doing is we're replicating the machine. So we have a, it's a primer uh, because you need to get to cover the plastic and the material. So the first layer out will be... Uh, because the gray primer is kind of the same colorway, I want to add a little white to lighten it up a little bit. That'll help the neutral gray side of the underbelly part of things. And then put a little shim shimmy of metallic in that so that when we chip this, you can kind of see a little bit of the metallic. I think we can pull this off because as far as I know, there's no metallic primers yet, right? Like that's not a thing. So we're going to kind of make one. Uh, this is not a natural metal finish and that's not the end game of that. Uh, so 
but yeah, because that you would get into other things. And the reason I'm not going to do the polishing and all that other stuff is you guys should all know by now, if you want to chip something, you need some tooth. And if you're chipping over polished surfaces, yeah, coach can get mad. Uh, let's just choose our camera angle. When is that coming? Is that a, is that in beta? It's, so I use StreamYard. So yeah, so I, I guess that would be technically, Chris, what you're talking about. If you're running native StreamYard live streams, which is, this is not, by the way, if you don't know what I'm doing, and I'm actually using StreamYard. I look at StreamYard. I actually don't see YouTube. YouTube's closed out uh, on my end. But the, even though it mimics it, and then it, it feeds into YouTube. And so you guys watching through YouTube, that's what you're seeing. But I'm actually in StreamYard app, so I can switch all my, I can switch all my views at, at, at whatever I can do, the Brady Bunch thing, you know. All sorts of stuff. So it's pretty cool. Uh, let's see which was the, this guy. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so we've got our gray and our white. Um, and then let's get let's get mixing. I've got some mixing cups here. I've got my little uh, mixer there. Get some paper towels. I'll put the keyboard way out of the way because it's brand new. In fact, let me before I forget. Just in case, because I this is this is thousand dollars worth of new fucking computer. <laughs> let's just pull a little paper towel over that love boys. That just keeps any overspray off the keyboard. The rest of this should be high enough. It's not a problem. Um, there are metallic primers and some lacquer. Yeah, I don't use lacquer, so it's not my. It's not what I'm. That's also part of that conversation. There's no water-based metallic primer, as far as I know. Well, maybe Vallejo does. Buy a hill they might. But let's get going. Hope everybody's good. Let me mix first, and we'll do the whole thing. I cleaned the airbrush this morning before I got started. My point uh, point three. Old school, Sparmax, MIG Productions, probably 10, 15 year old airbrush still still holds up well. Uh, and then we'll switch when we do other stuff, we'll switch to the, to the Tommy airbrush, the HD Superfine, because it's super fine. And then we'll do oils later. So what is it, 1230? If I don't say anything or do anything, hold on. Alexa, set timer for an hour and a half. Alexa, set timer for one hour, 30 minutes. She's not saying anything. Interesting. Maybe your Alexas are going off. <laughs> I hope so. That would make me happy. Okay. Uh, what do we got here? Double cup. I don't need to. I'm going to mix as a mad scientist. So there's no proportional ratio. Just watch and enjoy. Um, I'm kind of eyeballing this. Kind of gut. So you can see the gray is pretty light. So you can see where if you were to add a little metallic to that, you can probably stay within the aluminum color range. And that's the point of that. Um, but I'm going to lighten it just a smidge. PSA King Art is 55. Ooh, thank you, Matt, 58. Yeah, so in the description down below is my uh, paintbrush affiliate link to these guys. Uh, that's good because I can order. Um, I have to buy at the regular store prices. I don't get a, a deal on purchasing. I only get an affiliate commission when you guys purchase. But also when I purchase, I get money back. <laughs> I got to go buy some more brushes. Better get in there because I'm going to go take them all. No, nah, they should be well stocked. Uh, Clinton Mulder, how are you, bud? Uh, been a while for me. Giggity. Yeah, I figured aircraft commentary will probably bring in a few of you guys. You know what? Hold on. We need a top and bottom. We're gonna, we have to paint the whole aircraft with this. So let's make a little bit larger batch. I need, I need. Can you guys hear the music? Is, is sound okay? Everything good? Because there is a little bit on my end because I've got three windows open. So just making sure uh, everything okay. All right, I'm gonna put a little dance pop on. A little dance pop, do a little music on. Let me see if I can hear. Okay, I'll turn it back down. Just wanna make sure it was going. Okay. All right. I do have a little bit of water here. And then I've got my mission thinner. So if you recall with the mission primers, it's a two part systems catalyzed. That's why we're using it. Um, super strong when it's done properly. Uh, and you're going to watch that here today. So adding the paint in the primer shouldn't do anything to it. It doesn't hurt it. You can tint all your primers in this in this system. There's no problem either way. You can even use a clear primer and make your own color primer by taking paint colors and mixing if you want to. Oh, perfect. I hate when I get paint on the bottoms. Oh, yeah. No, this would be pretty cool. 
yeah, we'll get going here in a sec. But again, let me get. Uh, Got to make a decision. Should we do faded aluminum? Let's see what faded aluminum. I've actually don't think I've ever used this paint color. Let me actually pop this open just to make sure. Hold on one second. Okay, it is brand new. Uh, when you have a range of 200 colors in your stash, it's it's. Um, there we go. You can kind of see that's not bad. That's the color. What I like to do is anytime I open, now I do this for all bottles of paint, um, brand new. Um, take your your Tommy at stir stick, get that in there, and this has a metal ball in it, but it's but again, it's never been fully uh, whatever. Again, I only do this usually with just brand new bottles of paint for for when I buy paint. All bottles, all brands, it don't matter. Just give it a good stir. You never know what happens in transportation or if it's been sitting around for a while or whatever. So you always want to kind of get in there and, and get this stuff on. Um, DJ Mike in the house. You know, I would love it though to be truthful. So there's a there's a there's a little menu tab on my uh, control panel here that says brand, and that's where I get to put the logos and everything else up. Um, and they, they've added, like I said, about six months ago, they added this kind of 20 music levels, but they loop them and they're like 30 seconds long and they're just the background music you guys usually hear and they kind of all sound the same after a while. It drives me a little bit nuts too, don't get me wrong. I'm uh, I'm on board that train of, yeah, it's a, it's a little bit of a thing. So here's, this is just the paint on the thing. It's, I mean, it's nice looking metallics. I just don't think in truth to, to that conversation, generally speaking, even at Alclad, most spray paints don't replicate metal enough for me so i'm kind of always finding something and maybe that's why i've been a little reticent to, to truly do natural metal finishes um besides foiling stuff because that to me is still that's what i'm talking about like when you look at a foiled model and you look at a painted metal model you're like okay you know, say love you you guys know me i get kind of super ocd on that kind of stuff okay Mix and primer. So I've got a, a lighter, whiter gray, which is what I wanted. Okay, it's still worse now. We haven't added the metal yet. Hold on. This will probably darken it up a little bit. It's another reason I, I did that too. Uh, what happened to my keister? It's over there. I'm, I only I only do that on occasion. That's a, that's a little crazy. <laughs> I find that to me a stir stick's fine too, but you can. And also it mix fine. Like if I had to have a, if, if, if it was a color mark that I was, you know, whatever, just use whatever you want, man. <laughs> you get so, Mark, you get so concerned, it cracks me up. Okay. That's probably too much. That's okay. Maybe not enough. Let's see. I don't really ever do primer blendings in terms of adding paint colors to it. So, you know, there's a little bit of work experimenting, you know, I hope you guys enjoy that part. Let's, let's have a little bit of fun. There's no harm, no foul. Again, this is really what I'm doing is a primer slash chipping color all in one. And since the chipping color is a, a, a bare metal, if you will, an aluminum in this case, that's kind of what I'm doing. Does that make sense? It should make sense. But yeah, yeah, the Ikea thing is over there somewhere. Let me add a little bit more. I'm just going slow. To kind of create uh, kind of this thing here, and I'll add more thinner in a minute. I'm just kind of seeing it still. Yeah, I can probably I can probably juice this up. Okay, it'll absorb a lot. It's better to be conservative than overdo and have to redo the whole thing if you're not happy with it. And that's my recommendation on any custom mixing: is just take your time. We're in no hurry. It's only 1234. We're good. We're good on time. Yeah, and congrats to uh, anybody in Denver and or a fan of the of the Colorado Avalanche. That was a heck of a series. That last period of the of the NHL final of game six was uh, was enjoyable, by the way. I'm not the biggest of hockey fans, but I do appreciate the sport quite a bit. And when you get into the, the Stanley Cup playoffs, man, it's it's a thing. Those are some some boys right there. Uh, I run a, it's in, it's in this description, Jim, the list is, it's the silent air. I'm sorry, super silent made by silent air with an E on the end. 20 a, just like the Tamiya thinner X 20 a it's a 20 a it's in the, it's in the description down below, Jim, the, the name of it and where to get it. It's a nice, nice compressor. It's, it's, 
It's a nice compressor. Okay. What, what am I doing? I don't want that brush. Just checking. Let's pump it up a little bit more. A little bit more metallic. I'll add some thinner here in a sec. Okay, there we go. Okay, kind of getting to where now it's got a, like a sheen to it. I can see it. I can see it kind of. I don't know if you guys what the camera shows. So I've got kind of gray primer with the with the metallic sheen to it. That might be nice. We'll see where where you're at. Where you guys are right there. Take right my balls. Yeah, I'll get I'll get used to the new camera location. Okay, so let's let's thin this up a little bit. See what we get. So it should be enough to spray the whole model, maybe even too much, but that's okay. There we go. Ooh, did you see that? See that, boys? That's what you're looking for. Okay, when you're mixing with any kind of thing, what I like to look for is, 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 is the speed of the runoff. So I'm watching the edge drip down the cup. That's just kind of the general idea. You'll get different speeds and stuff, but it's what you'll notice if it's too thick, and that's where you're, you're going to be. If it's too thin, it'll go super fast. If it's too thick, it won't move very well, but that that's moving nicely and freely. So I'm fine with that. That's what I look for when I mix them. This almost for everything. There's very few scenarios I don't mix to that level. If I'm going to over thin, then I, then I know I'm going to over thin. Rarely do I ever under thin anything. There's almost, I can't think of a scenario. Uh, on an airbrushing conversation, maybe if you're going to do some crazy texture stuff, but that's not what we're here for. Okay, we all set? Everybody good? I wiped the model down earlier. It should be fairly clean. I haven't really handled it too much. My hands are pretty clean. I don't have gloves. I know that's probably a faux pas, but we'll deal with it. This should cut through pretty good. Okay, this guy's loose on the thing, so I got to be... I was trying to figure out a, a setup for this guy. I think I've got something kind of close. Okay, I'm gonna kind of. We're gonna be airbrushing it quite a bit. All right, hold on here. Get that out of the way. You can go over here for a second. Okay, we're good on that. I think we're all set. We're all ready. Uh, the blue tack on the. By the way, the cowlings are blue tacked, and then I used uh, Kleenex tissue paper for just quick mass. Uh, I'll deal with the cockpits and everything. That was what was holding this up a little bit as I have all the masking for the cockpit to do and everything. And I've got the, the Edward quick mass and stuff. Um, but again, I was, I was working this. Uh, I think it's gonna be more of a paint meal. So we'll get to, I'll just gonna quick jimmy jam the, the cockpit canopies on there later on when we get kind of close towards the end. Uh, today, it's just, let's get something going. That was kind of the point of that whole thing. So I just got a little bit of the base. That should hopefully under, let me see, hold on. Yeah, that'll be fairly stable. That won't flop around too much. The little lighter Tempest was a little bit more of a, it's hard to paint because it's so lightweight. As Chris, you probably know, it's a super lightweight 70 second scale stuff. Um, but there's some blue tack in the cowlings and there's enough. This actually has a little bit of oomph to it now. Uh, I took the motors out. We'll do the engines later. So the cowlings are loose so I can put the engines back in so we can paint the engines separately, put them back in, put the cowlings back on. Uh, you know, kind of right before we get to the weathering, weathering. So I don't know how far we'll get today on this stuff. I have to the stuff over there. Let me just get through chat real quick and then we'll start spraying. Um, Patty Cakes. Hello, brother. How are you, sir? I love that to me. It's stick. stick. Actually, uh, I've got two of them and I, I would not be able to, to do everything without them. Um, lost. I'm an Islander fan. Yeah, that was that was that was true because because Tampa had won the last two Stanley Cups and back to back. They put up a fight, dude. It went down to the last second of the last period of the la of the sixth game. That was like I said, I mean, it was there was it got intense um, to the pose. It looks <laughs> To the popo uh officer mike having a good day i can tell yeah he's been sending me mark lee hello buddy how are you sir good afternoon good morning good afternoon good evening wherever you be let's get going thank you for hanging out with me what else yeah and stick around to the end i'm gonna tease you like all the kids do we have a big announcement at the end in terms of a new project coming up so that'll be happening let me overlap my paper towels uh, we'll go over a little bit okay this guy here yeah he's a little bit limited in his Let's see here, hold on. There we go. Okay, there you go. So you'll see some of the airbrushing. That should be so a little bit of airbrushing requires a little bit more room for me. Let me step out of the way. Okay. Uh, should be able to do this pretty good. Kind of center this on the paper towels a little bit more. 
And it's just a little wood block that is kind of mounted on with some stuff. Okay, that should be good. All right, off we go. Got a little paint in the cup. Ooh, that's where it looked really high. Okay, so I usually set my uh, compressors around 14 to 15 on the on the, on the down low, uh, on, the, on the upper um, control. This is the Mac valve. Cranking it down, that was what, a half turn, three quarter turn. Spraying pretty nice. A little much, hold on. So now it's I put it down a full turn. It's a little bit of overspray. Again, this is this is just not a model. Uh, if you're if you're near the Hobby Boss Easy Kits, that's what this is. I think the concept's good. The execution leaves a little bit to be desired. Fit, it's mostly the fit. The surface detail is actually pretty good on these Hobby Boss kits. I, I'm not complaining about that. It's just, you know, they split the flap in this way. Like you've got to fill and, and, and do all the stuff. And, and, and then the side ailerons are really weird. And you got this huge like hinge. <laughs> it's like, you just can't, can't, can't deal. Okay, hold on. I cleaned earlier. Okay, hold on. Ooh, hold on. That can happen sometimes. Usually when you, sometimes when you clean, uh, you might get a little extra. Let me pour this out into the other airbrush. I might have to switch gears on the fly. It immediately, wait, no, no. Yeah, there's something in there below. You can see how it's starting and stopping. Let me swap that out. Always have a backup when you're live. <laughs> okay, why is this, hold on. Oh boy, all right, hold on. Boy, I cleaned something and now nothing works. That's not a pain issue. Don't don't say anything. It's not a pain issue. I was just not blowing at all. Totally. Oops. Oh, because I'm an idiot. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, boys. We're human. <laughs> 2022. We're we're all human. There we go. The hose wasn't connected. Okay, my bad. All right. Now, let me do this. Too, by the way. I might have cleaned improperly this morning a little bit quickly. And plus, I haven't used the airbrush in a minute. Yeah, that one just jammed up. So there's a particle in that shaft, in that, in that, in the needle thing somewhere. And I don't want to sit here and clean it on camera today. So we're gonna do everything with this guy. At least until it stops. So anyway, yeah, to these easy kits, to the Hobby Boss easy kits. Oh, no. Yeah, it's the only pisser with this guy when you're doing high volume is, is this a point two and it's got a little tiny cup, the point three uh, ounce or three ounce capacity, whatever this is, or no, it's point three ounces. Yeah, and I didn't fill all the gaps, all the parts, whatever. There's, there is, there's a lot of stuff on this model. To bring this particular kit to, to the comp standard is, you know, especially those of you getting ready for uh, the Nats and World Model Expo. It's, you know, I mean, it's probably better than the Dragon if you wanted the 70 second scale Black Widow, but it would take me probably another two, three months to truly dial us into true competition level. You know, a couple hours a night kind of process. But the surface detail is nice. I mean, the, the panel lines and everything are really crisp. I mean, they're they're Edward crisp, you know? I mean, it's not terrible. Just you have one CAD designer at Hobby Boss that does the surface detail, and you got another one that does the engineering. <laughs> they're not talking to each other.
And this is just a primer stage. And I can even do this too. I can even switch over to this view. I mean, it's a little bit more overhead. So you'll notice the camera colors shift. And what happens is, is this is a, a web camera. So it interprets colors slightly differently than the iPhone colors. And then the, the iMac colors are different too. <laughs> yeah. The OCD kicks in and I just give up. <laughs> What's up, Joe? How are you, bud? How hot is this in Miami? You paint primer on stream, boys. Just trying to get that. Yeah, you can see the, um, oh wait, hold on. You cannot actually, absolutely. That's why I like, because that views my view, so that's why I do that. But you can see the gap at the gear door there. I was filling that and I was like, <laughs> I've had enough. I got, I got stuff to do. Seventy-two degrees. Is that twenty-four Celsius? Twenty-three Celsius, something like that. Twenty-two and a half. So every now and then we're spraying pretty good. We're spraying summertime. Wet, just a wet with water a little bit, just kind of spun that in there just to keep that. Yeah, there's just something in that airbrush. So as you can see, this primer in terms of, of, of airbrush quality is, is beautiful. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. You can see the sheen, it go, I go down a smidge wet. It's not, it's not dripping wet or anything of the sort. It's kind of a wet first coat and I'm going pretty fast you're seeing real time because I'm not trying to teach you airbrushing right now that's that's we've kind of covered that before and you'll see my, my finger my finger pulls is jogging back but you can see there's a little blockage yeah I could have used another round of putty on that gap right there but I again I'm just you guys will be on in you see Ronaldo didn't fill his gaps <laughs> No, I don't care. This is not a big deal. We're trying to get to paint for you guys and weathering and stuff like that. If this was a, a nicer kit, I would have put more effort into it. But what what that means is um, I'll just spend less time on the P61 and we'll get to uh, a legitimate kit pretty soon. Because I've got a few in the stack. And it's a little gray on gray is a little tough. You know what I mean? You can, you can still kind of see it. And it's got maybe not enough of a sheen. I could have probably pushed it. I might dust the metallic over that just to kind of, I mean, no, maybe not. Do you want to do that? No, because, okay, so this was also part of the, my reasoning for the metallic in the primer. Um, and I should have put more in, I think. I think I could have put more in. Um, I don't think it's going to be a big deal either way. It's going to look fine when we're done. I could have pushed it a little bit more. But also, because of we're going to do some some chipping processes here, as you guys all know, with with the mission, we're going to do multiple layers. I think we're going to go mission primer. I've got live color for the zinc chromate, and then if you're on the Patreon and you know what I'm doing with the T72, where I've got a mission models over Vallejo, uh, the lower level kind of becomes impervious a little bit because it's a different brand and doesn't react the way the mission does. But I can just I could distress the mission on the very top levels without having any real issues below it and should be able to achieve all the looks that I'm trying to do. So that's kind of where I'm going with that. So the paint color and the primer, the primer is impervious. So that's why I was trying to get the metallic. That was the other reason I was trying to get uh, the metallic into the primer, but I probably could have pushed it a little more, even though it's, 
you can see how it's it's just laying down like butter. I mean, this is it's getting some nice coverage here. Actually, my little setup works pretty good. Spraying a little bit high PSI, mostly for weather and just to make sure this is a 0 0.2 airbrush that it's atomizing nicely. So usually I, I crank it down a little bit. Oh, I might have touched that. There might be a finger. <laughs> you guys get all the schnizzle pie. <laughs> Um, when we get to the, to the cam, I'll probably crank it down to a 10 or 12 PSI. Like I said, this, you can see, you won't give it, we're already spent a half hour doing this. So you'll see, we won't get all that far. So I just spin a little Q-tip. Pull the needle back when you do that. Pull, 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 pull. pull that needle back. You can just take your Q-tip and just spin that in there real quick. It's got a little water in it. Cleans that right back up. Solvent stuff, not so much, but in this kind of warm summer water water based painting, you have to be a little bit more attentive to it. And you'll have to you'll have to do that with with to me acrylics thin with X20 or alcohol or life color or Vallejo or AK or stuff like that. Any kind of the latex acrylic brands, you'll have to just pay attention. But there's no odor, there's no, there's no real, I mean, you can see this is, this is easy peasy. Easy peasy. But yeah, if I was doing metal and some other stuff, you know, I mean, you can see that this spray is so tight that you you can you'll get a, you know, if you're looking to let this kick off, um, if you're looking to polish, recommendation on mission models in particular, you give this a little time to set up before you really start kicking it down with with the 1500 or 2000 grit or 3000 whatever. If you need that step, I don't. I need the grit. I need the tooth from the from kind of the, the surface bite, so I don't care. Doesn't bother me none. I'm just checking my work. I got all this stuff. Okay, let that sit for a second so we can kind of, then I'll flip it over so I can do the upper side. We'll let the, we'll just let the airbrush be. We'll just kind of show you what happens when you just let it be. Because that's normal. You're going to, you're going to be spraying a lot of stuff and, and all those kind of things and um, so on and so forth. So you're going to, you're going to need to sometimes give, give things time. I've got one too many arms and <laughs> that is a negative of everything. There's still one too many. Uh, when we switch to the palette setup, I can drop everything down up, up in front of me. It won't be bad, but you can kind of see. Um, yeah. No coverage is fine. Did I miss anything? Oh, if I did miss a little spot, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold the door. I didn't get the, the inner wings. And we'll get to some chat, some questions here. Yeah, I have a couple of friends locally from Denver, so I was pretty happy that the Avalanche won. It was kind of fun to watch it with them because they're huge fans. Trying to load up those flaps a little bit. And I'm going to leave the, the drop tank mounts open for now. We might do something with those. Um, they look halfway decent. It comes with rocket launch, the, the three tube rocket launchers. The big, what, 250 gallon tanks? Are they, are they 2,000 gallon? How big are those tanks? The fuel tanks on the on the, the P38 and the P61, I think, use the same fuel uh, drop tanks. So those are in the thing, but they're split in half. It's a mess. Enrique, hello. Here for another stream. Welcome. Uh, did I miss anything? What's up, Jimmy Jammers? Kyle says, hello. How are you, bud? Super hot. <laughs> Miami's super hot. What's up, Gun Gunplum? Mew? How are you, brother? And then two hands. There he is, Jeffrey. Uh, maybe we could do another your song and dance version of Forever Your <laughs> While We Wait for the Painter. No, no, this will be fast. Um, beauty of it, it being warm outside, it won't take long. Um, in a few minutes. In fact, one let us do this. Sponsored by Con Air 1875. <laughs> it's not a negative. 
it's not a negative, but mission primer needs 15 to 30. Really? You don't want to hustle too fast. Yeah, you can see I missed some spots with the fill. I don't, again, we're not we're not concerned. And some of the sanding was a little rough, but that's okay. That's not bad. Um, and you'll see what we'll do is is like we're gonna do with the tempest. I'll show you how to kind of work with gaps and stuff like that with the paint and color. You can kind of you can kind of fool the eye with some of this stuff too. But again, this is not a comp build. This is really, we're talking demo. We're talking technique stuff here. We're talking, uh, we're talking, <laughs> just talking. I don't know what else to say when I'm airbrushing. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> it's random. It's all rando. I miss anything though. Anybody got any questions? Any other regular question? Yeah, if you do have a question also, by the way, if you're new, please put the word question and then write your question out after that. So when I look up, I can catch it in case I miss something. Death by demo. <laughs> No, I was talking to uh, to the boys at uh, Built Sideways podcast about what I do and how I do it and the live streams and all that stuff. And it's, you know, educational content and one to one in the scale model hobby isn't very common, to be truthful. If you could watch a lot of this stuff, it's, it's you know, it's part of that. Yeah, I'm risking touching this, but it feels dry. Like that. All right, let's zoom back out a little bit. It's a good looking plane, though. One of my favorites. In fact, you know what, since that's the belly, hold on one second, guys. Hold on, let's do this. All right, so we prime the belly. We're gonna shift gears a little bit. Let's get that out of there. Take a second to do a quick on the fly clean. What was I using? Hold on one second. Hold on. Faded, where are you? Faded, is it this guy? Faded, okay. Okay, it's drying up a little bit. Hold on one second. Do a quick flush. Let me out and go get out of there. Hold on. Hold on. Get a bunch more of these dudes. Hold on one second. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remix the color. Since we just did the belly, the chipping on the belly is no big deal. And I'm going to add, let's go, let's go way more metallic on this one and see what we get. See if we get a little bit more of a different. Uh, what's up, Pabsy? Spoiler, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert coming in hot. Yeah, yeah, we'll do it. We'll do a talk on uh, towards the end of the stream on what we're doing for the next big project. So if you just roll in now, guys, um, I'm just doing a quick airbrush clean. Just using water, just straight up water. Mission models is fine with that, which is its beautiful part. Get over here so I can throw shit away. Hold on. Hold on. Let me get out of the way. Hold on. Something's wrong. As soon as I wanted to do this, it's, it's fighting me. There it goes. Okay. <laughs> there was like something in there. On it's it's, it's what's happening when you're, when you're spraying a catalyzed primer through your airbrush. The one thing you don't have is time. So just by the way. Okay. There we go. But there was a little bit of a clog problem, but, but, let's get that back in there and get back in there. Let me flush a couple drops of thinner. Again, this is a point two to me. Okay, cool, cool, we're good. Fix that 
one little flake of paint there that got me that has me concerned there we go because those will tra those will travel down the thingy hold on one second thank you for your patience and waiting i need the elevator <laughs> Adjustable handles on the airbrush. Okay. All right. What was I doing? Okay. Fade aluminum. Hold up. This will be good for you, Met guys, too. Same principle here applies. If you want to do an alloy base for chipping with a primer situation um, and you're on a painting scenario and you're going to chip, this is a good scenario. So I've got a primer, gray primer, a little bit of white, and I put some faded aluminum already. Let's get a little bit of more faded aluminum there. A little. Let's go. Let's go the other way. Reset the thinner ratio. Take your time. So this is a primer. There we go. Let's see if this makes a little bit of a difference. So what I'm trying to do again, just to repeat, if you're just rolling in right now, is we're, we're putting the metallic into the primer as our chipping color underneath the base. Seals up the model, gives us a metal base a little bit. But I want just a smidge of metallic. I don't want a lot. And also because I don't have a, meta a pure metallic primer. So. Yeah, okay. Back to the grind. Let's open this up a little bit. Okay. Good win all views there, everybody in the, in the in the view camera. Let's see which way this guy. Yeah, this guy's his arm is a little is a one joint arm, so it's a little bit it works better for the palette cam, this guy up here, but let me go this way. That way? Okay, hold on. And I can move you back a little bit that way. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. We're good. All right. Okay, here we go. Round two, the top side. Spraying around 12, 13 PSI. Just laying down an initial wet. So when we talk about laying down an initial wet coat with the primer, this is what this is. I don't let it fully kick off and dry, but I let that first initial hit to bite the plastic. That's the purpose of it. If you spray from too far away or your stuff is drying in midair, temperature or whatever your problem is, because you all probably have problems, come back in, drop your airbrush down to the surface closer. Don't worry so much about your PSI. You don't need to be running any more than 15 to 20 max because 20 PSI will blow this around quite a bit more. So if you be a little bit more controlled, a little bit more tidy, this is the shape and size of most things we work on, whether that's a 35th scale tank, you know, high grade, smaller master grades, 76 scale aircraft. So it's a good scenario for a bulk of what we paint as scale model builders. Now, big stuff we'll talk about later. <laughs> so I'm going a quick pass again. Just This is just to get the wet primer down so it bites the surface. And this is what gives it its uh, superior adhesion. And then I build up the opacity from there. Okay, I'm gonna be a little bit careful around the cock. There's some green uh, cockpit opening color present, but we'll touch that up later. Any overspray I can deal with later. I'm not super concerned. I'm trying not to spray into the intakes too much. And I feel like masking them off. But. Again, I probably didn't do a very good job on seam filling in most of this stuff anyway. And I'm priming with the 0.2 airbrush, but so we're, we're, we're my 0.3 jammed up right away. So we're a little bit on this on the struggle end of things for. for this. So you can see how I start to fill that in now. That first, that first layer that goes down really bites that surface nicely. But that also keeps things nice and tight because I have really tight, tight panel lines on this guy.
Yeah, if the cameras are losing focus a little bit, it's because they're chasing my hand. So I apologize quick as we're airbrushing stuff. Well, that's a lot of work. <laughs> What's up, Jeff Lamb? How are you, bud? And I think the shape of the kit is nice too. I don't see there's a lot of discrepancies in the shape of this kit. It's really just a fit and finish, an engineering perspective of this model. It's like if they did a little bit better job, this would actually be a beautiful little kit, to be honest with you. you know, or Edward just make one or Arma or, Arma or somebody. <laughs> Seeing Chris work with his P51 and his, 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 his idea to put the wings on after he's painted, um, you know, you wish that a lot of these other companies would take that fit and finish level seriously. The one, the other one I see that does this, and those of you Met guys know this, Gunpla is, is Bandai. You know, I mean, those those entry grades are, are you know, they're fit and finishes. Um, outside of the one on the on the, the the seam line on the front leg of the of the RX78. Um, I mean, they do just a brilliant job, whether it's a $10, $8 kit or a $100 kit. Lay it down, lay it down. Didn't really seem to make much of a difference on the, I could have, I think I probably maybe gone to a dark, a darker metal, maybe. It'll still work. I think it's a chipping color underneath. It'll still be fine. I'm priming the whole model. We're almost done. It's one of those things where in my head, I'm like, oh yeah, that'd be like 20 minutes. <laughs> where are we at? Oh, we're okay, we're not that bad. Feels longer. Try to hustle a little bit here. Sort of tax the finger. A bit. Just chilling. What are you doing? Just chilling. Gonna snap some kits soon. Nice. You getting ready to work on your? Uh, is it a riser? What is that thing called again? Gunplumio. The Ryzen, the Kaizen, the riser, whatever that walking Panzer mech is. I built one way back in the day. I snapped one up. It, it's a little janky, by the way. Just be prepared. <laughs> it's not Bandai. That's like the default. It's not Bandai. <laughs> it's like a little default. Yeah, you'll have to glue a few little pieces. I think there's some tow hook lifting rings on his shoulders that are always loose unless you glue it down. And it doesn't stand. It's a little wobbly. <laughs> yeah. Tighten some of them joints up. But if you paint it, you're going to be doing all that anyway. So you're fine. Okay. Oh. I'm like, why is nothing happening? Because <laughs> I'm paying attention. I swear it's all stream problems. Yeah, I made way too much primer. As you can see, even that's way too much. So this stuff goes pretty far. So I'm gonna lose a little bit of my cockpit edge a little bit, but I'll redo that again later on. Let's get the nose here nice and... And I'll touch up the intakes with, with zinc uh, chromate later on with, with the brush. That I wasn't super worried about anyway. But you can see as far as the surface goes, as a prime surface, it's beautiful. So there's that. That's the, the, the main goal of our, of our, of our demo today. Airbrush and primer.
kind of hard to tell with the, the window open a little bit, the glare, the colors, the blue and the gray. <laughs> like I'm trying to make sure I've got everything properly um, primed. Still drying in some spots. Just checking the work. Good enough for government work, right? Okay, I think we'd be okay. I think we'd be all right. Okay, so let's do this. Try to wait for a second. I'd have to give the Hobby Boss surface detail and the nod over the Academy Tempest, even though they're, they're probably 10 years separation in kit release dates. Um, the, the, the panel, like once you get some stuff down on this and see some things, and I, I had sanded and shaped the cows and I never redid those, so they're a little rough sanded, but that's okay. Again, it's no big deal. Demo shit. We're not going to care. Okay. The cows, yeah, we're good enough there. Let me, let me do the cows a little bit more. Looks like I might have, might have missed it a little bit. Because that'll be a, a spot where you want that, that brighter color as a chipping color. Yeah, I didn't even, I remember I didn't finish sanding that. Whoops, didn't finish sanding the inner wing roots and stuff. Yeah, the fit and finish of this thing is just a lot of work. A lot of work. Which is a shame. Life's too short to worry about fixing a Hobby Boss Easy Kit in 2022. Right? <laughs> We're just calling it. Oh, what'd you say? What's up, everyone? Hello. Uh, hello, hello. Regular Bear Minis. Hoping, hopping in late. Nope, you're good. Trying to figure out a King Art order. Oh, sweet. Uh, yeah, and if you have any questions on that, the, everything that I particularly use from that company is, is listed in the descriptions down below. That way, <laughs> I forget which way it goes. Um, I'm trying to pronounce it, to be honest, but it's Ryzen, yeah, Ryzen Panzer. Yeah, Ryzen Panzer. Ryzen Panzer. Uh, the vision that just came out, but Minimal Faith would be much better. Yeah, no, it's it's it, it's a pretty good overall kit. Don't plum you. It's, overall, it's pretty nice. It's a little, little wobbly on the feet, on the ankles are a little weak. Um, there's a couple of small bits don't like to hang on. Um, and once you get it kind of posed and positioned, you're fine. It doesn't have a lot of articulation anyway. Okay, just letting this kind of sit for a minute. Just making sure before I really clean this airbrush, should I, did I get everything good? Good enough? Looks like this boom back here is a little darker. Hold on. You can say it just lays down beautifully. So if you guys are wondering how to airbrush primers, we're good to go. Yeah, not, not the not the most complete sound, but good enough. Good enough. Again, it's a little bit difficult because I've got daylight showing on. I'd probably be a little bit more uh, attentive if I was comp doing a comp model. Put that right there. Okay, nice. All right, uh, let's clean. Good times, good times, good times. Yeah, way too much. Well, I actually made a second best, so I added a ton of paint to it. So I were a little bit overdid on that. A little bit of waste. A little bit of waste. Okay, got my little. Right here, right there, my little disposal cup. Let's do one more. Okay, because it's water based, little, little spritz of water. This is just to flush it out. Flush 
got the bulk of the paint, the primer, whatever we're doing. Just get a little Q-tip in there. Start getting all the working all. You can see the primer starts to cure in the in the cup. That's a, that's the main issue of airbrush and primer. You got to be careful of that because it will, it will clog your brushes pretty good. Not careful. In other words, don't let this sit. Don't don't walk away. <laughs> Do stuff. Clean the clean the dude. So again, I've just only used water so far, just kind of flushing this out. Just let basically let the primer kind of cure for a minute. Um, can get one more round with the water. Just a couple drops. Using water to flush this out mostly. A couple drops of paint thinner. Do a little back flush. Open up all your settings in your airbrush so you can get a full. I was I was clamped down a little bit. So I loosen that up so the trigger goes all the way back a little bit. A couple drops more. So this is, this is a, a good way to efficiently use your thinner as a cleaner. And this is all you need to do in terms of just kind of cleaning this out for now. If you're on your game, it should go pretty easy. It's really crispy molded. Yeah, it's a nice, it's a nice, what's the brand who made that? It's not Kotobuki, is it? Kotobuki, Kotobuki? It's not, it's not a plum kit either. I might actually still have mine in the closet. I don't think I got rid of that one. I think it's just sitting there. I don't think anybody bought it on eBay. I built it and put it up for sale on eBay. Nobody bought it. Okay, so we're kind of set on the airbrush or on the primer cleaning. It's got a little bit of a sheen to it. Kind of a kind of a shine, it's kind of a shiny gray. <laughs> I probably could have pushed out a little bit more, used maybe more of a dura aluminum versus the faded aluminum. Maybe the faded aluminum is too. There's a recipe there, and I'll keep working that out. Don't worry. We'll we'll keep going. Again, it was experimental a little bit. So I'm not, not Cavico, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Cavico, Cavico, Cavico. Okay, what do we got? Uh, let's see here. What are we doing next? What are we doing next, boys? <sighs> I'm concerned about rushing this too much. <laughs> Yeah, you can already see how uh, I picked up a lot. I, I scuffed a little bit under the bottom there. Yeah, so let's let this sit for a sec. Yep, I've already scuffed it once. Let it let it sit. It needs to needs to set up. That's the trick with that primer in particular. It needs to set up a little bit. All right. Uh, let's let's switch to oils because I got to have something to do, right? So the airbrush is clean. Primer setting up. Second, I'm gonna let's see which camera is this doing. This one, okay, hold on. All right, let me take it off. This thing here. Let's see, loosen this guy up. Okay, I'm gonna lower the camera down so we can uh, do a pallet cam. Everybody good? Any questions? Everything just chilling? <laughs> We're just chilling. Get that out of the way. There we go. It's got to go all the way down. All right. Almost done. It's a pretty quick switch, actually. catch up with the uh, Kenobi so I did I did finish Kenobi I'm a couple more on stranger things uh, for the season 4.1 
think you guys are This way. All right, we set. Let's go here. So OPR stuff here. Get you, dude, here. Okay. So now with the with the new setup, what you should be able to get now, or what we should be able to get now. Adjust that a little bit. So this guy here. Still bumping in the shit. It's just the camera comes on. I just get to turn into a clay, cl clumsy dude. Okay, so let's see. Let's see. That's going to go like that. There we go. Okay. So the point of this setup is, yeah, do you hear the echo now? Is there an echo or no? It's just me. Bump the mic, and I think it's being weird. Okay. Sound good? Everybody hear me okay? Up there, wherever you guys are. Okay, we're good with that. Okay, good. So you'll be able to see the, the dance of the brushwork with the OPR now. So that's kind of the point of the more of the setup. The airbrushing was kind of a side part that was just, I would just set up for that. So I figured just use it. All right, we're almost ready. That's not a bad, that's not a bad switch on the fly, to be honest with you guys. So in other words, that way I don't have to do this with the camera during the stream. <laughs> so that kind of, and it also kind of opens it up the space a little bit for me to do my thing a little bit easier. So that's also the other benefit. All right, so let's see here. Get this guy here, get our little test mule. Yeah, I'm letting that, I'm gonna let that primer cure for a little bit. That's why I was a little bit concerned pushing it on a live stream. I probably should have primed off camera, but it's okay. <laughs> Uh, live and learn on that one a little bit. We'll see. We're still only 130. We're fine. Maybe we'll do this for a little bit. I'd like to get to some yellow zinc chromate and do a little bit of chipping. Um, so maybe what I'll do is we'll work on this with some weathering on the oils, um, just to show you some techniques. Um, and then, yeah, we'll do some chipping. Okay, I think we're good. Thank you, Jeff. Okay, sweet. Um, this is probably driving some of you nuts. Dun, dun, dun. First thing I'm gonna do is do a little condition on my brushes. Get a little thinner in there. Yeah, should be pretty good. Yeah, yeah, okay. Seems like all the feeds are clean and good. My hand will block it a little bit when I do some stuff. But basically, when you look at the palette camera now, you'll be able to see me mix or see the brush work, you know, between this and this as I'm looking. Yeah, you should be good to go with that. All right, sweet. Yay. Woo. <laughs> okay. You know, small victories, right? <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah, it worked good because I did a Patreon stream on streaking, uh, on applying streak, not streaking. I did not streak on camera. Um, did a uh, how to apply and blend streaks and stuff on various subject matters. So that was the first time using this. Um, the other thing you have to do, what you should do, I did add some new, um, I put a, a fresh bit of raw umber, a little bit of burnt umber. Uh, this is burnt sienna. And then there's a black, a dark gray, uh, a Payne's gray, uh, industrial earth, um, a gray green kind of a color, uh, 12 shades of gray. That's that Amazon palette uh, color selection thing. Um, there is a faded gray 502. These are all Winsor Newtons. 
and then you've got uh, UN Faded White 502. You've got King Art White. You've got 502 Buff, 502 Light Mud. Uh, one of the 12 shades of gray, the blue gray. You've got 502. I'm just walking around the palette right now. Um, you've got uh, the light blue is 502 German Highlight Panzer Gray. And then you've got 502s. It's 502 of Toilung. Uh, the brand is when I say 502. Uh, this is the copper patina one. Um, and then you've got faded blue, faded green, and olive green, all 502. Um, this is King Art Emerald Green and Hooker Green. And then a, a gray green, or no, yellow green, yellow gray, 12 shades of gray. And then the purple gray, 12 shades of gray. And then faded maroon, and then faded red primer, 502s, yellow ochre king art. Um, what the hell is they call this thing? Faded beach sand or beach sand, maybe? That might be beach sand from 502. Oh, I forget, it's a really pale, pale yellow. And then the regular yellow is... Uh, faded, uh, no, Luftwaffe yellow, 502, these 502s, and then 502 orange, which I think they call, actually, I don't know if they changed the name, back in the day it was called Faded Panzer yellow. That might just be called orange today, but it's 502. So those are the colors on the palette. I don't really need, I need my whites. Let's see, I need the, the grays and the blues. These guys here, just make sure they're kind of, it's like cake frosting, I'm just kind of going through and making sure they're, they're a couple weeks old. So I'm just kind of making sure they're good to go. Oh, uh, let's see. I can never find the extra eyedropper when I need it. Okay, because I don't want to use the water eyedropper because it's a solid base. Get the water out of the way. So I'm just going to put a, just a drop of thinner around some of these. Because again, this palette is a working palette. It goes in the freezer when I'm done. It's a couple weeks old. So I'm just adding a little bit of fresh thinner for, for being able to get the paint on the brush. So we're ready to go. Usually takes a few minutes to get set up. That's how that goes. So I'm showing you that. That away. Uh, Clarity. Red one's a blender. These guys are blenders as well. And then the other ones are all color brushes. These are all the King Art brushes listed in the description down below. Uh, if you need new Keith Short, hello. How are you, bud? Yeah, so the primer's on uh, P61. I'm letting it kick up a bit. Uh, we'll spend a half hour or so doing this and maybe we'll switch back and add some yellow and see how it goes. Um, I'm concerned on a, I got some, I have some concerns. I'm not quite convinced just yet. We'll see. We'll see. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. Okay. So what am I going to do today? I'm kind of going on the fly. I do have my books down here for reference if I need it, but I don't really need this today. We're just going to kind of alter some panels and do some, some quick stuff. Let's work on the streak wing part over here. In fact, let me get some tiltability to this. So we have it kind of went on an angle for us. I'll get one more. Okay. That should look pretty good. Yeah, we good. Everybody good? Anything else? Everybody just chilling? Y'all just hanging out? Okay. So fresh surface, what I like to do is get a little thinner down. Not super wet, but just kind of wipe the surface down. That's dried oil paint, it's not going anywhere. I don't know if I can get rid of that. Okay, hold on. Okay, let's see here. Some light clear. So this is kind of cleans and preps the surface. That's all this is. I'm not getting it super wet, but I'm just kind of wiping this down so it's it's easier to deal with. It's a fresh matte paint, or it's it's un unweathered matte paint. Nicely done, but it's gonna have a little bit of tooth and stuff to it a little. All right, not do that. Let me get some of these dudes here. So first up, what I want to do is I want to make a, a color similar to the sky, which is what that color of the paint, not to that sky, to this sky, to the sky paint, RAF, RAF sky. So I'm just using my palette.
mix some colors. I mixed a little bit of the, uh, uh, that's a very pale blue, German highlight blue. Uh, no, sorry, German, German highlight faded gray or something like that, Pan Panzer gray. It's a little bit of white and then a little bit of the, the hook green I'm on the paper towel. The only thing you're probably not gonna see as much of is, is the paper towel work down below. So I'll try to move it occasionally for you so you can kind of see. Just kind of see what we're doing. Let's see what we got. That's actually really damn close. Pretty good at this mixing thing, I think. Okay. Oh, there's a piece of fuzz. Okay, so I know that this blend here is pretty good. Let's let's go. That green was a little bright. Let's go a little bit more in the olive shade. A little bit more of the olive green in this. More of that blue over here. So you should be able to see me mix it on the palette. Okay, sweet. Yep, works good. A little bit of white. Probably a little strong, keep mixing the white. So I don't have a sky oil color, RAF sky oil color. Just to kind of get used to that. There we go, just kind of putting that down, drawing that around the panel. So I'm doing is a little bit of a, just a shift to the color a little bit, kind of a, just breaking up the panels. Going around, I can even go over some of these older streaks too, can kind of do a little, little translucent playfulness. So what I did was I did a demonstration on how to apply a streak, but this is actually kind of more of a weathering conversation. So now I'm kind of light, I'm gonna do a little bit of lighter shade. So I just kind of pull a little bit more white in that same color. You can see, I just add a little bit of thinner to that just to get that to blend up. And I check it on the brush, it's a smidge wet. So I wipe it on the paper towel. Just kind of unload that a little bit until I'm done. No varnishes, no nothing. Again, I should be really looking at references to see kind of where this should go. I'm just kind of breaking this up on my own. <laughs> Are you breaking up with me? Were we even going out? <laughs> Jeff knows what I'm talking about. Jeffrey knows what I'm talking about. Two hands. Okay, so let's do a little bit of a, a mottling effect. So if you're doing kind of a, a, a base underneath with an airbrush, this is another way to kind of play with that. I need my stippler. Stippler, where are you? This guy. So I put a little bit of extra wet. A little bit closer to the camera. Okay. Yeah, there we go. I've tilted the model up so much it closed into the camera. Closed that distance. By closing the distance, the torpedo was unable to arm itself before it detonated. <laughs> before it hit. Combat tactic, Mr. Ryan. So just using a little stippling here. So those of you that, that enjoy the airbrush uh, basing stage, you know, this is kind of another way to go. So I just use a kind of a, a slightly damp, and I'm just stippling those marks, the oils that I applied. This is one of those colors too that it becomes pretty easy to to kind of see your brush marks you can see where the wet thinner is you guys should be able to clearly see uh, the amount of thinner that i'm dealing with uh, you can see how precise i go around the the, the round L's. i'm not really worried about that right now uh, all i'm doing right now is just kind of adding a little bit of patina and if you recall back in the first tempest episode uh, we had weathered this side of the wing and there's still some older residual things and i <laughs> Yeah, we had some Bob Ross accidents in there. I think I'd, I'd, I'd hit the palette or brushed it or something by accident. So, um, But since I put some new fresh streaks over on this side, and you can see I'm working around the gear doors and stuff like that. So to talk about this for two seconds, because it's a refresh, um, it's been a minute since we've had that. Hello, Vivian. Good day to you, Sue. How are you, bud? Uh, and hello, South African now. Yeah, what time is it over there? Yeah, what time is it? Viv no, Vivian's in Virginia, but uh, he is from South Africa. But And Kyle and Nog and the boys are, are Kiwis. Um, there's probably a few Aussies in the house. Um, 22.3 L there you are, bud. Yeah. L is also, um, South African. So it is 10 35 PM. Okay. So you are nine hours ahead. No, really? I thought you'd be further ahead than that. Maybe you're looking on the map. I guess so. Yeah. Cause you dropped vertically down on that same time zone. 
So you're so L in in South Africa, you guys are same as Berlin, Brussels, Italy through there, right? Okay, I guess that makes sense. I'm looking, I've been a minute since so I looked at the <laughs> Giuseppe, hello, how are you, buddy? Uh, you're going back home next month. Okay, sweet, that'll be fun. What's up, Mike? What's up, how are you, bud? I see you, Giuseppe. How are you? A ten boy. Okay. Um, but what I wanted to say is, I get sidetracked easily. I haven't looked at you guys, and I haven't paid attention to the chat. Sorry. Um, one of the things I want to talk about was with color. So again, when you're weathering color, and we did this on the railroad stream with with the Santa Fe war bonnet, uh, we do this on multiple streams across the board. Is when I weather color, I don't always dive into adding grease and grime as a weathering element or dirt colors as a weathering element. I'm now in the patina of the paint. Um, and so I'm using the base camo colors that you spray, it doesn't matter what you're doing, as a mid-level range color. So I'm choosing the RF sky as my middle tone in, in this case. So what you see me doing is I'm adding up against, in certain panels, a darker version of it. And by putting a darker versus a lighter tone of the same color, you can start to shift those panels. You do this, we do this intrinsically with the pre-shade, the basing conversation with airbrushing, you're doing kind of the same thing. This is just a little bit different way to approach that. I find a little bit more efficient myself because I can control it better versus an airbrush. So that's the one you can combine them too, by the way, you can do layers of multiple techniques together. It's not one or the other. It's just, I'm just trying to show you just a, a pretty quick down and dirty way to do this. But that's the principle of color weathering is that work with the middle tone of, of your pink color and then you'll add a light or and or a dark. So you have, you have three, <laughs> three for my Euro boys three for the Americans, the Boy Scouts. Um, my ex always used to do three that way. And I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> what is that? It's three. Yeah. I get in trouble. Don't worry. I always get in trouble. I'll get yelled at. Um, but this is the basic principles and, and, and it's been done in, in to varying degrees over here. Um, in fact, if I wanted to, and then all you have to do is, is if you want to take your base color and, and gray it out or say you want to enhance the saturation so if you want to kind of desaturate it maybe get a kind of a grimier gray version of it you can just you just work with your oils you pull in a little bit of the gray tones into that or if you want to go more of a pop of color of rf sky with a little bit more green into it you saw me initially grab the green on the palette this is what's happening with all of this i'm just adding a little bit of a, of a color breakup in it, and that's kind of what this is and i'm working with the again it's just the gear doors will go open um they'll have a slightly different weathering to them because they're going to be vertical most of the plane's life, you know, sitting on the ground. So it's going to have a different look to those, to the gear, to the gear doors. Uh, you know, we'll treat the flaps a little bit differently. Uh, we will treat, we'll treat textiles if there's fabric covered parts differently than the metal covered parts, so on and so forth. Because some things will sun fade differently. Some things will, will, will absorb things differently too. Um, so Patty Cakes is snapping together an Ewax sack right now. That's a rare kit, man. Uh, is it goofy as hell? Yeah. <laughs> So it's a robot with a big, huge AWAX ray dome attached to the back of his, his robot head. It looks like a like a like a Hawkeye merged with the Gundam. Is what it looks like, uh, an E2 Hawkeye. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nine. Appreciate. All right. So that's the basic. What's what we're doing? Uh, let's see. What was I doing? <laughs> What was I doing? So if I want to go, let's go, let's put a little UN white. It's kind of an off-white shade into this kind of green shade. Kind of gives me some other tones. So I have, I have a range of tones in my palette because I have all the, the, the varietals to play with, if you will. And again, you don't see me doing panel lines or anything of the sort at this particular moment in time, but we'll get to that. And you can see I put a little green over the over the streak on that guy and I kind of faded him down a little bit. But you can do this in, in kind of there's there's not a right or wrong to the order. You know, it's not the first order. So, you know, you can kind of pick and choose your battles if you want to kind of do some color weathering first and then add some streaks over it. Or in this case, I have streaks down for demo purposes, so I don't have a choice. I'm just kind of drawing the color in around and we'll blend it in a second. You can see the color of the paint is not wet. It's not bleeding out. It's not running around. It's not a wash. I'm actually painting the model a little bit. That helps you understand what we're doing. Um, I'm thinking to go, probably go flaps a little bit lighter maybe. I don't know. 
So again, I should really be studying my references to see where to put the light and dark versions of these panels or what I'm doing. I don't want to get super quilted either, by the way. You don't want to have every panel different to the whole thing. You've got to kind of be somewhat reasonable about some, certain things. Everything in scale. Your tintins in scale. Your streaks are in scale. Your chips are in scale. The color of the panel lines you choose to, to, to darken up are in scale. All of that matters. It all matters. It all matters. Let's move a little bit dark over there. I'm going to pull a little Industrial Earth. Industrial Earth is a really dark OD. 502. So I'm going to put a little bit in that in there. You can see to be able to see it on the palette. You guys see that? Okay. It's a little bit of glare on that. There's a little bit of overhead glare on that a little bit. I have to lose some of my, I'm just checking. I'm looking at the oil palette uh, view just to kind of see. I'm trying to even the glares out across the board. Okay. So I've got kind of, let me lighten some of that, need a little bit of a lighter version there. Put a little too much. Industrial earth man, that's okay. Kind of a dirty sky color. smidge on that on that lip there switch to my blender switching the gun switching the gun I still haven't seen Maverick <laughs> such a bad person I'm supposed to go with my parents and they never followed up I'm gonna blame them Kind of softening up these marks that I put down earlier. My hand is recognized. Yeah, I think I've got the setup kind of locked in a little bit. I think this actually kind of works pretty good. Super low key, but I think as far as, you know, display of information for you guys. But you can see there's no varnishes here. There's actually no chipping underneath this stuff. I'm kind of doing the edge wear and tears as I go. Airflow streaks are pretty straightforward. You know, at least, at least in that vernacular, there's a, some fuzz in here too. But again, you can see I don't really I haven't really concerned myself with the panel lines yet in terms of applying a, a, a pin wash, if you will. Uh, we're just just not something I'm, I'm concerned with in my in my technique processes. What I'm trying to do is I've kind of then mentally I've blocked off kind of this area around the the, uh, the port side gear and kind of, you know, working my way through this a little bit. And then what I'll do is I'll kind of do the the, the movable surfaces, if you will, and then kind of the leading edge. And then kind of tackle this the right side with the roundel and, and, and treat some stuff over here too. Being this is the belly, you know, the, the markings are going to be pretty true, all that kind of stuff. Let me see, I forgot to blend some of this right up in here. But you can see how I'm, see I'm starting to separate out the, the panels quite easily. It's all super delicate work. It's like, I'm not like manhandling this thing or doing anything crazy. I'm not flooding the surface with anything like that. There's again, there's, there is no varnishes on this straight up matte paint. Boom, done, go, go, go. Uh, and it, it'll, it'll dry out completely and it'll be in dry paint. So there's no, there's no real issues. At this point in time, you should be handling physically touching the models anyway. Getting the feathers and scales, bitch. You mean feathered streaks or uh, like bird feathers? All the goggle. What I miss? <clears throat> My streaks look like the guy flew through a flock of geese. <clears throat> I love you, Officer Mike. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. So 
you can see I'm starting to kind of gray up the RF sky a little bit. So I'm adding a little bit of faded gray, a little industrial earth. Kind of going more of a desaturated tone, kind of more of a darker. So I, like I'm not putting down like a grease tone yet or anything of the sort. Kind of starting to break up the movable surfaces a little bit, switch into the blender. Again, there's the whatever thinners on that should be good to go. If it's not, I just it's a little dry. Oops. Yeah, I've got the, the thinner cups right between the wing and the camera. I gotta be careful. So just do a little coffee shake jiggle, run down that panel line. Still haven't quite got to the point of, of adding the panel line just yet this kind of darker sky color dirty sky color a little bit kind of just giving me a little bit of a vibe a little bit of a feel and i'm trying to do a little bit of combat service bird look with this i'm trying to be somewhat honest to the to the situation just give me a little something something all kept in the 70 second scale Cause I can't really see, okay, everything's kind of blocking the panel. Hold on here. It might be a little bit of a, of a, of a ninja move here. So I'm gonna pull a little Payne's gray, kind of a dark gray. Actually, it's not even, hold on, is it coming in? Okay. Yeah, there it is, okay. Kind of a really dark grayed out version of the sky color. So now let's come into that larger cap panel line. Just drawing the no capillary action. I'm just drawing it in there. I don't want any thinner flow. I don't want that. I want to control this. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna OCD be anal control. My Virgonian nature is in is in command now. <laughs> so the reason I'm doing it this way, because I want to really show kind of just you can treat panel lines with a little bit of love. You kind of see. It's already popping there's a little bit of a dark and you can see how it's even though i've got bullshit fit on the uh the landing gear covers you know it's just most kits don't give you a good fit anyway it's normal with gear up but you can see how i'm starting to play up that darker line right there in fact now that i've got this kind of set this wasn't enough so let's kind of Just a smidge more thinner. Just, I want a little bit of flow this time. There's a little bit of a lip right there. Kind of connect that. See, I can still use capillary when I need it, but I keep it back for when I do really need it for a purpose. So you can see it's a little wet right here. So let's wipe this down quickly so there's no tide marks. So what I tried to do right there was rebalance because I had a weird fit issue of a panel. Kind of tie the look of, of the, the larger movable gaps. I'm kind of going to intensify a little bit more. That makes sense. I'll get to questions in a sec too, where you guys are just chatting. Everybody chilling. Stop, pump that one level up. There we go. Get the brush it down. Let's go with the two for now. So I'm just using a two brush setup, really just kind of a versions of the sky color. spot i'll fix it next time but the palette cam's pretty nice though that actually worked out pretty good i'm gonna kind of push this down into that gap this is designed to fool the eye so i'm kind of getting a little bit of jimmy jam around the, the gear door itself see what i did there was I, i've kind of fooled your eye to think that that line continues nicely let's pull some, some some streaks off of that these are super tiny so i'm not overly concerned so we can, you know add some variety to the 
and you're loose because there's a little bit of a lip it's not it's not a flush fit kind of come in and kind of darken that edge a little bit more That's how you'd handle a panel that doesn't fit super nicely together. I need a little bit more flow off the brush. In warmer summer temps, you'll notice the brush tips will dry out a little bit quicker even than normal. Even though it's only 72 in here, it's pretty dry humidity for us now. In Portland, typically is a is a 50 to 60 plus humidity level percentage base. So, what's up, Brian? How are you, bud? Question, when taking this approach with the multi-tone camo, would you switch up the, sh the shading color for panels? Yes, sir. So considering your your your, your World War One style multi-camo Warhammer, um, yeah, so what I what I would have is, you're looking at, this is basically my, my RAF Sky because that's the base. It's mostly a single color monochromatic. Um, I always have three or four or five different brushes. So if you have a, if you have a gray camo, red camo, green camo, brown camo, try to have at least a color brush per, and then that way it stays like, I'm not going to stick the RF sky weathering brush into the red for the Randell roundel part. I'm going to pull up a new brush for the red. So that, that answers your question. I always have four or five. I just put them down because when I'm filming, I'm, I'm just, I'm starting to bump into stuff and fumble it around, but you can see in truth though, you know, 15, 20 minutes of work of weathering, you know, just two simple shapes or uh, basic, uh, what do we got? Color weathering, a little bit of grease and grime weathering from, from the opening panels a little bit. Um, try not to get super crazy with it, but I am trying to just show you something as well. A lot of the Tempest photos I've seen, the bellies are so clean. It's like, okay, and that's probably because it's, they want that laminar flow really nice. That's a high speed prop and that that wing shape is the laminar flow. They're probably instructed to keep those wings pretty clean, to be honest with you, I would think. In late war, they had a lot of time. You know, that's the other part of that. RAF late war, 44, 45. They're, they're probably not under the, the intense pressure they were at Battle of Raymond. So you should play into that too when you're doing your weathering conversations, you know, understand the Battle of Britain 10, 15 sortie type scenario is gonna be a different type of weathering than say, chasing V1 bombers, you know, uh, three or four times a day scenario versus post T-Day scenario running, you know, uh, you know, mid caps and then running strikes and stuff, not mid caps, but you know what I mean? Running air, air defense. I forget what they called it back then. Uh, I've been considering picking that set up for sure, man. What set are you talking about? Question, did I, question. Oh, sorry, Mike, I missed your other question. Mike, do you find that the 50 shades of gray, it's 12 shades of gray. It's $15 and the answer is yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and the reason is because it, it, it's a lot of filler colors. And what I mean by that is, is most of the, like if you're using some Windsor Newtons and you find some 502s, uh, the thing I like about the 12 shades of gray, which you can think, uh, two hands, cause Jeff, Jeffrey's the one that, that told me about it. Um, I think on, I checked on Amazon the other day. I think the price was 1599. Um, it's here. Hold on. it should, I don't, is it listed in the description? It should be. The King Art, the King Art sets like 16 of 20 for 24 colors. And then this dude, um, cause there's no linkability to it. Um, it's just an Amazon product. There's nothing else I could do with this. Um, it's this, that's what it's literally what you search on Amazon for. Comes out of China with 12 paints, but they're all these filler shades. So you've got kind of tints of blues and grays and greens and, and the, it's got some really handy Mecca stuff for purples and um the red gray orange and they're just literally called that red gray brown gray orange gray violet gray it's it, i've talked about this set before it's in their um 21 mil tube size so they're they're almost the same size as the 502s this one set i mean this is i'll never use them all like literally and it gives me gives me just a smidge of kind of my off shades which works pretty well which is it, it's useful for the money it's useful Considering one normal tube of oil paint from most companies is seven to 10, sometimes 15 to 20, depending on what you're doing. So yeah, I mean, at that kind of price, I would just grab them, you know, they'll last forever. As long as you keep them stored properly, they'll last forever. You know, oil paints are, that's the beauty of oil paint. Oh, but yeah, two hands, two hands, I think, tune me, tune me into that one. Turn me onto that one. Okay. But yeah, if we just, you know what we're at right now, 
I'm probably a little bit dark around that gear door. Not a big deal because I don't have a lot of choices. The reason is there's a gap there that's black. Not much I can do unless I really, you know, again, this is demo shit. I don't really care. Nobody, nobody's, nobody's judging this. So I don't, <laughs> don't judge me, boys. You can all do all the judging and gnats. I don't need to worry about that. Um, so yeah. Okay. Uh, but let me add a little bit more green and, and, and stuff back into this. So let me kind of take some of the dark tones out, wipe it back, clean it up a little bit. Come back into this guy, come back to my original blue, a little bit wetter. So I get some more blending. A little bit, put the white in there, a little bit of the green. You can see all your colors are kind of still there. They're all as a, as a reference for everything you're trying to do. Works really well. It would be, there's a lot of off grays for the Panzer stuff. Um, I haven't obviously done a Panzer gray in a minute while I've had the oil set yet, so I haven't really used it for that. But yeah, they're, they're good shades to get. Uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend them if I didn't think there was value there for you guys. So, so yeah, okay. So let me come back in here. Kind of another layer of color. Checking my... My thingy here. It's a little wet. Come in here. Huh. Let's see. Let's... We'll do a little bit more of this kind of panel here. Kind of distressing the paint a little bit more. But yeah, I mean, to, 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 to continue on with that commentary a little bit, you know, definitely play up your, your specific theater, your specific combat scenario, your specific, especially on the historical side where we have really good information that we know what these, what, what the equipment was being used in. And in this case, aircraft, you know, between Spitz hurricanes, in this case, uh, a late war Tempest, you know, versus a late war clip wing Spitfire kind of a thing in Mark 14 or whatever it would be. Oops. Alexa stop. Oh, that worked. Okay. So I was supposed to be airbrushing for that. <laughs> Alexa, stop. Oh, I said two times. So she did. You can do one more. What are you going to do, girl? You can do another one. <laughs> she gets a little sassy. Um, but yeah, play up, the, play up your theaters, play up your combat scenario, understand and read about it, learn about it, what were they were really doing. And, and it plays into armor and some other stuff too. And even, even you can even you know, treat that for mech. You know, Amor Ray was, was always going back out into combat. So that third or fourth sortie with that machine, would it would look worse than when he, when he had it on the first part of the story. So all those kind of things make a difference for the story. Got to tell a story. Just kind of Jimmy Jam, kind of blend this up a little bit. Kind of keeping up an airflow vibe to it, you know, in terms of mostly the, the it's kind of a, a longitudinal vertical pass. But there's very little thinner involved. I really like this color because it really demonstrates to you guys probably of all the colors we've used to date. You see how little you see it evaporating on camera. All this stuff means it's work like it's it's work it's doing its job properly and you can move quickly. Like you don't have to wait for this stuff. I don't even have to hair dry too much of this stuff. I'm just kind of cutting this back a little bit. Probably tighten this up. a little strong it's a little strong but again to the panel lines you can see i don't treat them all with one color evenly it's not something i do I, i'm just observing the panel lines themselves is, is just you're going to get a lot of variation between where the hinges are located where the lube is kind of coming and going to the peat all those sorts of things play a difference And then again, playing up your lights and your darks against each other is always a, is a helpful process to uh, give you a little bit of, of life between the panels. So in other words, another way to, to talk about that is if, if you have a, 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 an area to weather and it's like a, a wing on an aircraft or something like this, when you, when you distemper this, the, the paint, what you're not doing is is what I don't recommend is if you have a certain color outside of you know modern jet gray stuff if, if you're dealing with colors 
remember it's you're better off not applying like in other words if you have a you know if we go the other way if we go this side if you have colors like i don't i don't add gray to that as a paint like i don't layer up a gray over that you know i'll blend it into my oil paint to kind of desaturate the actual uh earth tone uh middle stone color um or the earth tone so I, what i'm doing is if 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 i'm working with colors like this and i want to i want to do something to it i'm not adding a whole nother color on top of it only in the situation where we're dealing with kind of the really dark greasy stuff that's its own separate color range but in terms of weathering the colors themselves so i don't know if that makes any more sense or not i sound like i'm talking to myself right now <laughs> do you guys understand what i'm talking about nobody's saying anything so <laughs> uh jim alter got hillary greetings from chicago tune in for another round to learn nice uh greetings from northwest indiana yeah a lot of midwest boys too yeah it's probably midday for you guys almost five o'clock closing time okay so we'll do a little bit more, a few more minutes, and then we'll see if we can spray some zinc from it. See if that'll work. Okay, what I want is a little bit of a panel in color. So every time I talk, it, it dries up. kind of going around this and so I've used kind of a really it, it probably shows up a little darker on camera it's kind of a middle grayed out version of the sky color for the first round of, of panel lines and you can see I just kind of I tried up the camera yeah things are drying up should move the thinner cup over here let's clean these up with the thinner my I've got a little too much so I'm gonna squeeze that out it's a little bit dry so I'm just kind of jogging that down into the panel line a little bit more tighten that up because these panel lines are super fine it's real easy to overdo them real easy to flood them all that kind of stuff Want a little distempered edge to that uh, gear door. Again, these oils are workable for a little while. You know, you kind of just keep doing it. And I'm just kind of checking my composition as I go around. Again, you can kind of see I'm just so far just concerned with this section a little bit. Kind of went, I've changed kind of halfway through. It's still a little bit wet. The glare of the thing. I still meant to get a little, I want a little more green in this band. I want this kind of color, so I got to go back. And that was what the thing I did not do was pull this color back over. There we go. Okay. I'm going to just a shift more of the blue. Kind of 
helps the composition a little bit. It looks like a little much right now. That's okay. Kind of push this around a little bit. I want this panel a little bit more of a green tone. Kind of break up this. Kind of doing it on the fly a little bit. That's okay. And see, by not touching that small little uh, patch right there, that color pops back up because I'm putting other similar colors around it in different different uh, values and hues a little bit more blue green. This is a good point to, to dry that up. A little bit more stippling on that guy. Actually came out pretty cool. Okay. So just kind of soften this up a little bit. Just gentle stipple. Colors this light to work with, you, you can quickly get away from yourself. So this is why I'm just kind of keep knocking it back a little bit. And I'm using this kind of cool little color I've got in here a little bit too to kind of push that up to that gap panel a little bit better, tidy this up a little bit better. Get a little bit of overlap. Just kind of showing you how to do that. But see how the, you, you can, I feel, I feel personally, you can kind of control that a little bit better than, than with an airbrush, especially in that size. You get a little bit more kind of a, a patinaed paint look out of it versus kind of a softer look. So there's, yeah, I don't tend to lean on hardware store products to be truthful. They're going to be a different chemical mix. I would lean on art store and hobby store and, and don't cheapen out. Don't be trying to think you're saving all this money because you're not. Uh, I think that's one of the big fallacies of this hobby is you guys want to go buy a gallon of paint thinner and <laughs> okay, no, dude, you're not. You don't use enough to, to justify that the savings of five bucks off the same quantity. It just doesn't matter. I think you, you get too hung up on that. You guys get too a little bit worried about that. Um, but yeah, you can, you can definitely sideways step to an art store, but you'll probably pay a little bit more to be truthful for some of this stuff. Um, yeah, that's okay, Jim. I mean, the, the clean builders, uh, rollout commander, still a bud. Uh, you know, rollout commander. I mean, um, um, uh, Jim. Sorry, uh, oils, clean builders. Yeah, no. There's we, there's the clean building side of life. Whether you're a car, a truck, gunpla, mech, aircraft. Um, you know, this is really the, the heart of what this is. The heart of what we're trying to do. Um, at the end of the day, is is really trying to you know combination of storytelling, combination of of Given the, the visual interest to the viewer, so that you know something of interest to that, and and then in my case, one thing I like, we talked about this last night on the Built Sideways podcast a little bit, was um, I really enjoy the patina of a machine as as it, it goes through its its lifespan, which is why I tend to lean on more weathered projects. So we haven't really touched the gear doors too much. Uh, I'm, I'm leaving them kind of in that color to kind of break it up a little bit like this. This is, you know, the first round of, of working with the, the weathered paint. Um, but you can see there's there's no need for mats or varnishes or, or any other thing else other than the oils on the, on, works the same as armor. I don't really shift up anything works the same as uh, on the gun plow. Um, I control my panel lines by brush application, by painting them in there a little bit. Um, and then I control the flow of everything with the thinner, uh, keeps it all within parameters vis-a-vis, it does what I what I want it to do, so to speak. Uh, it's early days. There's a lot. I mean, obviously, there's there's much further to go, but that gives me a good basis. And there's some older. This was resprayed over that slightly. There's some there's some things. 
actually, probably. So, I don't know. Okay, my next to it. Should be right in front of the palette. <clears throat> okay, I can't reach it. <laughs> Hold on. I can't quite. Let me get the. So, using the same colors, reload that brush a little bit. I got to get this to where I can reach it. Is it still on there? Okay, that's probably even a little better for you guys. You can see just, I'm always, just, it's just a toe. It's just, just a tip. Just a tip, boys. <laughs> that's what she said. So let's see, let's wipe this off a little bit. This is a shit show. <laughs> yeah, I forget what happened. I, I I think I touched it with the brush or with, it was loaded with, with oil paint and it got all messy. You can see there's a little bit easier setup to deal with. <laughs> I'm just slapping some stuff down real quick. There's enough thinner in that paint that I can kind of come in with my blender and put some directional streaks a little bit. But I'm not adding more thinner to, to really flood that surface. That's probably something a lot of you guys mistake, make them make a mistake on instincts because that's kind of the traditional way to do things. So keep your blenders fairly dry. You know, if you're new to this, if you're learning this, you'll have a much better time with the blenders. It's, it's easier to it's easier to manage the learning process from, from the early days. Uh, if, if you're blending, you see how dry that is? The bristles are trying to splay apart. Um, Keep the thinner out of that as much as you can. Use your paper towel, unload that. And then when you when you attack the surface, if it doesn't move it, then just put the little, just put your toe in the water, get a little bit of thinner, wipe it back down the paper towel, reset it with a smidge more. You're just adjusting micro increments. There's you're not, you're not doing is this on camera? Okay, yeah. You're not doing that. Don't dip the whole thing in there and doing and, and getting the brush that wet and then attacking the model. That's not what I'm doing. So again, let me get all that thinner out of there. Gonna wipe that back and you know, I've got a nice crispy tip. There's a little bit of thinner in that. And that's how you're going to be able to blend all this stuff and you know, without making a muddy mess. Just kind of color that paint on there. And you can see just the slight tint and shades. Real easy to do. Dry that up. It'll go, it'll kill back down a little bit. And there's some brush strokes in there. There we go, a little bit better. Yeah, the, the little marks there are a little bit difficult, but I'm just kind of taking my time. I'm kind of using them. You know, it could be some sort of, I don't know, uh, something happened, some sort of leak or some sort of, you know, blow off or something, or you flew through something, you know, blew, blew up a train and flew through some something or something. That can happen. I mean, it's not super unusual. It's a little weird, but we'll have to work with it because I don't want to respray again. Okay, so let's spray some zinc from it. Did everybody get all that? <laughs> everybody good? Everybody hanging? Yeah. Again, I find this really enjoyable. Um, you know, you can see it doesn't take much when you're just kind of in the zone. Um, in fact, if we're in the zone to put on, let's, let's switch it up. Um, but you can kind of see how quickly you can do this in a super simple setup with just your palette, uh, your thinner, and a few brushes. And I showed in this on the streaking video on Patreon too. Um, 
what they do, armor, robot, and plane, all with the same palette, all with the same set of brushes on, on a 40 minute video. So it's very flexible. There's a lot of uh, efficient flexibility. Uh, no need to varnish it, let it dry. You'll be fine. Okay. All right, my friends, let's see if this is probably, hopefully this is set up enough. I mean, it's definitely dry. Let's do this. Let me do this, see what we got. Back out. We're using uh, P38 as a reference. Uh, for whatever reason, it's hard to find, um, and I don't have it uh, handy. I don't have a P61 book. Kodokai, what's up, Brian? How are you, brother? How are you feeling today? Okay, we're going to use kind of the P38 as kind of a... That's a natural metal. Okay, we'll get into natural metal bird. Well, don't worry. We'll, I promise that. But I, I, I need a good kit for that, too, by the way. You know, last This kit's too yank, too janky. We'll get to the color picks in a sec. Just kind of getting the vibe. Okay. There's, there's, there's your natural meta finish. That's the YP, that's the prototype. Oh, prototype, yeah, what size drop tank is that, boys? Let's say, I always forget that. It's 500 gallon? Can't remember. Chat will know. Okay, um, okay so it is hard edge demarcation on that early stuff. Here we go. This looks Aleutians campaign to me. This looks Alaska. Uh, all the captions are Japanese. I'm kind of, I'm kind of eyeballing, guessing. Um, and I know early, or you know, you can, you can kind of start to see, you know, what's. Right here. See how the yellow zinc really pops out. There's yellow tips and stuff, but there's also open panels. You're seeing the yellow pretty strong. Um, pretty yellow nose on that. Yeah, it's got a little yellow nose there too. I'm just kind of looking, I'm just kind of getting a feel for things. I'm just kind of looking around and checking stuff out. A little bit of yellow popping through. Obviously a lot of dust, a lot of dirt. You know, so you've got, you've got Army. Uh, my, my interpretation here is vehicle camo, OD. I don't think this is Navy Gray, even though that the photo has a vibe to it. Because if you look back at the, the C-46 back here, a very gray od so there's probably a color shift problem here but then you shift over to this um was it a hudson this lockheed with the brown and the green you can see the green's really blue so you're getting a lot of sky down on your reference photos color photos are tricky in truth most uh, vintage color photography referencing interpretation is trickier than black and white to be truthful because you what you have to do is pick out colors you know uh, for example we know what the what the the U.S. star is obviously the white, but so you know there's no tone in the white. It's a pretty clean photo, so the colors are clear, which is good, but there's a shift in film probably. It looks more blue and gray to me. So we have a navy on that, the navy blue on the on the, on the pink color there in terms of the, the, the Air Force market. So this color is, I'm going to guess this is a heavily faded olive drab, and then you're looking at, uh, what is that, a P40? So I'm looking at the OD through there. I'm looking at through there, but this guy almost looks like a, if you look up here at the green here, now I'm guessing this is more of a, a film version of Air, US Army Air Force Olive Draft 41. Is that correct? I think so. Um, there's, a, there's a richness to this color of being a really deep blue and it almost matches the neutral gray. So be careful with it because when you look at your paint colors, it doesn't look like, the bottle colors are a little bit different. I'm just kind of studying this a little bit because you can cut. I almost thought for a second that was a faded out black night fighter. That's kind of where I'm going with that. What's up, Forest Ghost? Let's see. Ya. Because when we get to this stuff here, so you can kind of see what I mean. This gets this one gets a little bit more green green. So this this photography is a one more step going. This photography is a little better, but you can see in here a really good pop of yellow. I'm not seeing a ton of high. I I think we're good on the color of the of the metal. You know, you're seeing a couple little chips. Now I'm using the P38 as kind of our game plan. Uh, the main one will probably be kind of 
Is it this one? No, wait, where's the other? Just do, yeah, this fellow. Okay, so this is kind of, there's these photos here. So, you know, that should be photo recon blue, if I'm not mistaken. So you can kind of see what I'm talking about, how the, the olive drab looks a lot more red, brown in this color photo. It's the same paint job as the other ones. In fact, it's probably slightly earlier because it's got the red surround on that. But anyway, over to this fellow. I still think this is pretty color accurate, fairly close. I'm just kind of looking at the chipping, you know, what I'm seeing, what am I, what am I going to be doing here? You know, obviously there's a lot of wing root stuff. So I think what I can do is let me pull this over here. And I do have some, I do have some P61 photos, but then we'll get to there two seconds soon. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to game plan this out. I'm trying, okay, this is an important step. I'm, I, I don't want to, whereas the weathering of the oils to show you a technique, I'm just kind of was, was just doing it. This one, I want to be a little bit more true to the program. So we're not seeing a ton of yellow. That's interesting. So my interpretation is the OD chipping off the aluminum is pulling the primer with the zinc chromate with it. Given what you're seeing, kind of. You guys can see kind of what I'm talking about here. So you're seeing a difference in chipping a little bit. I think we can replicate a lot of this stuff. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a life color yellow zinc chromate. Uh, and then all the OD and stuff will be uh, in the mission models because I think we can do kind of the hard edge chipping with the life color to showcase the aluminum. And then we can kind of spray the, the, the mission around it and kind of do some erasability elements to it to kind of get a double layer of, of chipped effect. I think we can pull that off. Maybe not all of it today, but we'll get it going. We'll get some examples going. Anyway, that's where we're going to kind of. So let's see if I can, if I can not F this up. Okay, let me get to, uh, do need this out of the way. For now, actually, why don't I just do that? Just pull that up for now. Question, were World War II American Army Air Force and U.S. Navy aircraft prime with an undercoat color? Whether, yes. Uh, well, outside of the, the zinc chromate stuff, um, do you mean a different color, Jim? <laughs> One downside of the 40K stuff, no, yeah, for sure. And in your case too, Brian, I mean, you're going to, you know, if you're, if you're doing the 40 K armor and, and, and I know we'll get to it and we won't get to it right away, but we eventually we will uh, definitely get to that conversation. But, you know, uh, I think you're doing a great job. I mean, you're, you're studying armor builders and, um, you know, pull a lot of reference from construction equipment, especially the type of crawler type tank designs that they use. It, it does ro ro roll through, uh, and rotate through and kind of a, a one-to-one, -one, the crawler excavators, um, Bobcats fit the 40k vernacular a little bit. I think you can get away with that. Two 165. The big one's a 330. Okay, thank you, Jeff. I knew somebody would Google that shit. I thought maybe it was a 500 because these are the those are the um, to the hot rod conversation. You know, to the post war hot rodding uh, dry lake bed speed record guys. This would be the drop tank. This is what I'm talking about. These drop tanks here. Um, these are the ones that they would set up, you know, with the V8, early, early version Ford V8s and stuff, early Chevy V8s, um, and then put the wheels on that and go out to the lake beds and, you know, dry mirage, lake mirage, uh, all that kind of stuff. And, and Edwards, and, but the, I believe that's the drop tanks they were using. Just curious. I thought they're a little bigger than that. Maybe the jet ones are the ones that have the, the 700 and thousand and 2000 gallon stuff. Okay, cool. Cool beans. So let's. This let's not use alcohol not today it's too early to drink so let's use a little Vallejo chip and medium water based <laughs> oh, okay, good. okay so one airbrush is down let me see if we get this be oh okay this is my other second hpc holder you can tell it's older because you can see the brass showing through the chrome okay this one has no mac valve so this one is at the preset that's full plone 1415 um, 
Yeah, I'd like to do a lake steer for sure. Um, I'm a little bit surprised we don't have, um, there might be, maybe there's a resin stuff with this thing. But, um, I'm just gonna do a section. I don't wanna commit fully yet. So let me just do a section and see how this goes. Cause if I screw this up, we're at a primer stage, I can still undo it. I don't I do not like spr spraying clears in general. I find they're, they're the most challenging things. Um, yeah, I would probably say even at 30 second scale, there's some 30 second scale car parts. Uh, for me, two hands today in today's 2022 conversation, I'm actually, if, if this was a plan of saying, okay, I want to do some of those hot rotting, you know, belly tank racers. That's the word I was looking about. The SoCal Speed Shop, belly tank racers. And I worked at SoCal Speed Shop for a while too. So it's, 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 it's kind of a familiarity. You can see why the Mac file is so handy. I have to crank my, um, there we go. A little spitty i just need something yeah spraying this stuff has never been my my, my favorite um 3d printing jeffrey and where are we at 2 30 okay okay we'll do about 20 minutes of this see how far we get and then we'll do the reveal of the next project coming up yeah that's what i would do because i think you could control your scale two hands uh, in terms of the lakesters are small really, really small single seat car racers in general. So you could do an 18th or a 20th scale version, print that out, kind of a conversation, or even 24th. Uh, you have multiple scales to work with. All right, not my favorite. We'll see why. Oh shit, you can, it's just spitting. Hold on. You can see why I like the aerosols. And also this airbrush I just pulled out of a drawer. <laughs> it might be a lacquer airbrush too or something like that. I can't remember the last time I used this thing. Okay, I think I got it. Oof, 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 oof. Not a fan. Yeah, put a couple drops of water, thin that down a little bit. All right, get a little chipping fluid down. Um, yeah, you're correct. They are pretty small. I'm thinking like a Formula Ford type size race car, similar size. Um, so an 18th or probably an 18th scale print would probably be really fun. You know, you can do a nice motor with that with a lift off rear, really do something cool with that. 18th scale is big enough. You can really, you can really do some things for something like that. 24th, still fairly small. I mean, 43rd is pretty tiny, but you can have some fun with that. You can have some fun with friends. I'm gonna do a little bit of a no-no only because I'm down a brush, <laughs> down an airbrush. I'm gonna put this through my mission models in life color. Y'all might have hair dryer, yeah. Okay. So I don't have zinc chromate in life color, but and again the reason is I want my want my primer impervious and I want my life color, my my yellow zinc chromate layer, chip layer, impervious because what's coming, what I just showed you with all that conversation with the P38 is that mission models od on top is the raceability one and so anything underneath it that's going to come up from the water i don't want to deal with that at all i don't want to seal it i don't want anything because i want variations so we're going with paint brand variations to create the barriers that we need that makes sense it should 
hope it does. Okay. So I'm gonna take, I've got a little bit of the regular matte yellow and a little bit of a lime green. I have this guy as a reference. And you can saw in the, in the reference photos, the yellow zinc chrome, it's fairly yellow. So it's, it's a good, this is actually a beautiful yellow zinc chromic color. But again, I don't want, I don't want this guy on my model because I'd have to seal or put poly in and stuff like that. I don't want to deal with that right now. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna make our own. And then we'll go to the OD later. So that's really, really thin stuff. So this, I think, is maybe, is this a diorama paint? Okay, it is a diorama paint. So this is kind of a wash paint almost. We're just going to use it as a color tint. I don't need a lot of paint. So mix these cups. These make me nervous. I always feel like I'm going to spill them. I do like dropper bottle paints. They're way easier to deal with. Okay. Just need enough to spray. Actually, probably a little bit easier. And I do have, but where are you? Where are you, my friend? I have not, oh, here it is right here. Never used this stuff. Believe it or not, I've had it forever. This is Life Colors Proprietary Thinner. Never used it. I usually use water. I'm thinking maybe this will give me just a slightly stronger bond. We'll see. I'll see. We're just messing around. So I'm gonna mix this by brush to kind of carefully get my tone a little thinner on this guy. Just tint the yellow with the lime green color here. Kind of gonna get kind of close. Getting in there. It looks brighter on camera. You're getting all the glare in the sun. Okay, so that's that we can kind of use it as a guide. I know if I try to pour that in there, <laughs> I'm just gonna dump it in and it's gonna be a shit show. Thin this down in a minute. Get close. It's probably good enough for yellow zinc chromate chip color. I don't need a ton of it. Do a little bit more. Yeah, this lime green isn't really paint, but it's the only other color I had that was close. I only have a few life color paints. So I have to kind of mix it up on the fly here. Okay. This one's more of a creaminess to it, but I don't have any other colors in it. Okay, okay, smoky. Almost ready. Okay, that, that should be dry. That chicken foot should be dry. Let's do this. Evan Thin Life Color Paint with their proprietary thinner. So see, again, I'm just kind of eyeballing the using my visual reference. Just using an eyedropper in the thinner. Do, 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 make some paint on camera. Everyone's falling asleep. Yeah, okay, nice. Okay. All right, I think we're ready to spray. Let me clean up a little bit so I don't spill it. So this is kind of a, a chip and test. We are we are doing some things today. Okay. Hold on 
One second, almost out. Okay, I need to switch over Mr. Hose. Put a bunch of water on that dude for now. That was the shipping fluid. That way that brush doesn't dry all gunked up. I'll clean it up after the, we're almost done. We're getting close. Now this might fall right, I just need a little spray. Flush this through the water. Hold on. Almost ready. What I miss? Uh, Revell makes some six scale engines. Yeah, I would just 3D print the whole thing, dude. I'm sure you can find 18 scale Chevys or Fords, flatheads, whatever it is. Either way, I don't think it's that hard of a project. The wheels to me would probably be the more of a critical element of, you know, make sure you get the right wheels, right tire pattern, um, you know, solid with the bolts and all that. You know, modern 3D printers will cover that nicely for you. Okay, should it, this should transition over now. I use Life Color Thinner after spraying with Mission. I don't normally like to do this. You know me, have an airbrush for everything. I'm, I'm shorthanded. So let's, let's press on, see what happens. Probably gonna be really bright. Crank that down. There we go. Okay. Everybody good? You know something? <laughs> You're right. I am actually trying to source a, a really nice medicine cup. I had. I'm out of the other one. My oil one. I have to. I have to go through and and find the maker of this. This is the nice one with the. You can see it's got the big edge round lip. These uh, little ship box ones. These guys. These guys are the sharper edge ones, not the best for what we do. I agree that you can you can skip this thing and it'll splash on you. My fingers paying that. Got a lot of spraying today. Okay. Are we on camera? The one thing that's nice, it's a little, it's a little neon-y, it's a hint brighter, but that's okay. Not, not super concerned. This is more of a chipping, you can see I, I bumped it right there and got, I already got it. That was, that's why I let the primer set up a little bit. My, my sanding, uh, <laughs> yeah, didn't even go back and try. You didn't even try. Okay. Can give us enough to work with them. This is my first time spraying life color with their thinners. You can see it sprays, sprays beautifully. I mean. I've always liked life color. I've always, I've always liked the paint. I use it quite a bit in the books. Yeah, it's, it's, I think the blue skies is making a little bit more gr greeny yellow zinc on camera, but that's, it's still close. I've seen enough yellow zinc chromium. Now that's, that's in the government range of acceptability. That's good enough. We're running out of time anyway. Okay, let me clean up. Clean up my mess. Oh, uh, but uh, what, did I miss anything else? I don't know. Take a little water, Life Colors water base. Dump that out. Air pressure back in. All right. Yeah, that worked well. Just letting it dry a little bit. Give it, give it a second. Okay. Yeah, but again, to, to answer that question for you, I just think if. if Projects of that nature, that to me is the ideal candidate for someone to get into, or because I think the shapes are pretty simple, you know, and you can you can find the references. You can even scan and measure if you had to, then transfer that over. So I think you could probably come up with something pretty quick. 
So just using a little bit of the Life Color Thinner now. Seems to kind of have a silkiness to it. it smells like coffee. It's like a, like a like a dusty coffee. Life Color always smells like a little bit like a chocolatey when you spray their paint. It's got kind of a chocolatey vibe to it. And that airbrush is clean. Yep, cleanish. <laughs> These guys can go in my little bin. Put that guy away. Let's do some chip on. But you can see with the with the systems I use, in, in all seriousness, uh, there's a there's a very efficient uh, background to this. In other words, the things I'm doing aren't you know overly complicated or dramatic. You know, with a few pieces and bits, uh, I don't even need a lot of stuff. I mean, we're you know the hair dryer is a critical um, one. I will say, I just want to make sure this is good and dry, just on low heat. You can see how that matted down. See how that just went dead matte. So it's a, it's a, it's a really nice paint. Uh, I do recommend them as, as another good brand to, to work with. Uh, you're important. Everything smells like coffee. That's true. That's a good point, Jeffrey. I made some, made a nice fresh pot today too. Nice French roast. <laughs> um, yeah, if you can get some metal stuff that you can keep cleaning and reusing, that's a good that's a good way to go too. If I had a complaint about life color, there is, and you have to be conscious of it a little bit because there are things that happen. So they use a lot of plastic containers. The seal here is never, they don't have an inner seal. It's its oftentimes a little janky. Um, you can have problems where um, the old paints off the rack were a little bit thicker. The viscosity was like peanut butter sometimes, really like a, like a, like a churned butter, really thick paint. Uh, those will dry out on you because you will get evaporation over time through this through this bottle system. It's not my favorite. You know, I think the glass setup for this size is way better. Um, the tolerance is a smidge off. You can feel the caps a little. See, the cap has some movement and loose, so it's not a super snug fit. These bottles here, this they fit totally different. Like, there's no movement. These The fit of this is really, really tight, so that they're, they're a much superior design, and obviously the flip top helps too. And then you can, because they're flat on top, you can also, I store them upside down so I can see the, the color easier because they're all single color caps. Um, whereas the Vallejo caps, because they're pointy, it's, unless you have a rack, it's hard to put them upside down. But anyway, anywho, anywho. Okay, what do I need? Chip and brush. Well, you can see how this all flows pretty easily. It's not hard. Get my little water right here. In fact, I could use another another paper towel because it's this. Okay, so. I'm sitting down and chipping something. This is also the first time I've chipped something of this nature in a long time. I don't know if I can hold this. Do I have anything to... Let's see this may work. Okay. So I need... I need it's a little bit easier to hold. It's loose on the stand, so I just knock it off with, with this stuff. But, okay. So when you're sitting down and starting up, I just want to have just a smidge exposure on some of the aluminum popping through the zinc chromate. Most of this will be covered by OD, so I'm not worried too much. Okay, so the brush, let me do that again. You probably missed that. <laughs> okay. Slow mo, super slow mo, mo. Unload, 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 unload. That's why the color, I use a color paper towel. You can see how I switched. The reason is I can see how wet that brush is. And I want, when I start chipping anything, when I start chipping anything, Go slow. Take your time. Try not to touch this too much. And just see what it's going to do. Just kiss them, just scrubbing across the edge. I want 70 second scale World War II fighter chips. I'm looking to see that gray pop through the yellow. And this is the, the Vallejo chipping medium with the life color paint on top. Putting a, putting a smidge more water. Let's wet that up there a little bit. Because this will determine how I know how to chip the rest of this model going forward. In fact, hold on. I can take this out for now. I can always redo this. Get out of there. It's kind of getting my way. Okay. That helps a little bit. Doesn't take much. So 
You can just see the edge chipping happening. It's actually coming up pretty easily. So the Vallejo stuff works pretty well. You know, in this conversation, the Vallejo chipping medium is designed for the acrylic latex crowd, which is what Life Color also is. The vinyl latex, uh, the vinyl, I'm sorry, vinyl acrylic and latex acrylics, which is uh, Life Color and Vallejo in particular. I think Gen 1 and also Ammo as well. Gen 1 AK. They're all in that count, I believe. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure. I'm done my homework in a minute. Okay, so again, my brush is almost dry. I'm just running the side bristles across. You can see how it's coming up pretty easily. So I'll do a little bit more. Again, I'll OD spray over this. So I'm just gonna kinda, it's not really showing any kind of metallic, but it does show enough silvery contrast. I could have bumped the metallic side of that combo more. So I'm just gently rubbing in, this, in the flow direction a little bit, airflow direction. Kind of working my way real slow. There's almost no water. You can see that's almost not wet at all. So I have to hold it almost because you need to rotate around for certain directional stuff. Say this wing root area. And you can see it comes up pretty easily. I it, it uh, when I sprayed the Vallejo, you saw it was kind of <laughs> like it dumped a lot. That's I hate spraying clears. That's that's one of like in terms of this conversation, that's one of those things. So there's probably too much uh, chipping fluid down, but it does chip okay. So I'm okay with that. And if this happens too, by the way, if that kind of happens, you can also go back and, and just respray some of the, the, the color that you're dealing with, in this case, more zinc chromate. So you can see I'm super, I'm just barely kissing this. So it does chip easy, there's some fuzz in there too already. You know, thinking the maintenance around this inner wing root area. And I, for, I don't forget where the wing walks are on this thing. It's, it's, it's somewhere in here that they could walk across that. Let's kind of get a little bit more. So what I would want to do for the few, for the rest of this model is I've got to basically thin down that Vallejo stuff a little better. I got to practice a little one more time, something else, and kind of get that that spraying down of the chipping medium. Uh, the reason I'm using the chipping medium versus the hairspray is because I'm gonna eventually, like I said, I'm gonna go to emission models paint. And as we know now today, to remind you guys, alcohol, which is the number one ingredient inside a hairspray, breaks down a water-based paint. Um, it's actually why if you chip with life color and Vallejo, by the way, using hairspray, you've had some weird things happen, which is will also a slightly different version of the weirdness, but it's still weird. That's because of the alcohol in, in, in hairspray, which is why they have a water-based chipping medium they provide us. That's what that is. So, hopefully it answers some of those kind of lingering questions some of you guys kind of need some reminders on or helpful. So again, this is lower level chipping. I'm just trying to get a little bit of the metal to show through. And then when I spray the OD over this, I'll cover most of this up and then I'll chip back over that and you'll get a little bit of yellow peeking through. Again, there's almost no water, just kind of gently rubbing. And when you see these chips form like that, just keep moving a little bit. So I can spray a lot less chipping fluid is what I'm saying too. I got a lot on the front edge too much. There it goes. It's almost a dry brushing, kind of 
slowly wearing this away. Again, there's almost no water. You can see also vinyl, uh, these kind of paints chip differently too. They're a little bit more of a hard edge style. There we go. Kind of, kind of boot scuffy scratches, scrapes. Oops, I had to kind of yank on that one. I can feel that bristle pull that that lip. There. There's a little tiny panel line right there. Kind of poke through some of this a little bit more slowly. I'm holding this like a chopstick. There's almost no pressure. I mean, you can see the bristles bend and stuff, but I'm not like, I'm not scrubbing. I'm not really scrubbing too hard. It's pretty delicate. And this tells me again that there, it just tells me that the, uh, probably a smidge too much chipping fluid down. Get a little more wet, a little more aggressive. Just tickling the paint though. So I put a little bit more water, but a little less pressure. I'm, you can see I'm just, I'm barely holding I'm just kind of, and my elbow's resting on my chair, kind of just tickling this a little bit. Trying to get some different. Thinking that these two intake areas around the motor will be where kind of some of this chip will, chipping will occur. And this is again just a test. I'll do uh, probably left. I'll probably do Night Fighter Black, and then we'll do OD over here. But I'll have the yellow. But I'll have the yellows in chromate. And leaving the primer to sit was the play, by the way. So that dark spot there was a was was a mistake. Where I think it's on the bottom side too. Yeah. So the primer was too wet and, and those the, the mount scuffed it. So the primer wasn't cured. I was hustling. I was hustling, boys. Okay, we're almost done. Yeah, this is going fine though, but you can kind of see. Okay, so here we go. This actually a little bit of redemption. I was a little bit kind of wondering. Um, and quite been convinced just yet. It's good, probably a good stopping point to talk about that. What I wanted was the glint. What is that? It's that when that sun pops off that metal, you want that glint. And you see that? It worked. I want that metallic glint without being metal flake paint. You see that right there as I rotate that through that hot spot. See how under the yellow, when it exposes a chip, it gives you the reference of right there. You see it right there on camera above the past the intake right here. That's giving me what I was looking for that metallic glint of, of like a non-polished aluminum structure underneath, so to speak. So I think that that there, as, as the light rotates around, it looks a little dull, but as, as, as the light hits that, there you go. A little validation for you, that felt good. <laughs> I'll take that, bitches. I take that and run, mofo. Okay, yeah, see that right there as I rotate the light passing through? So that's what I was hoping for was that this process in a chip conversation, knowing that that's going to be a tiny little mark of gray, silvery aluminum. See that as that light pops that right there. So it gives you that glint of, of, of metal to it. And that's kind of where I was directing this with when I discuss metallic paints and doing those kinds of things, 
um, you know, because even Navy Bird, you can even see right there at the wing root, you don't, it kind of just looks like a, you kind of see it a little bit now that we know what we're looking for, but if you were to think that's a Corsair or a Hellcat or a Wildcat wing root right in here, see how you're getting that glint. So that's a primer with a metallic mixed into it to give you that. And it's got the strength and adhesion. It's not going to come off because I'm not, I'm not killing this. I'm not scratching it with metal or anything. You saw how delicate that was. Um, and this is workable for a while. So I just, again, this was just a kind of a, just a test a, a verification validation. Um, but when that matte yellow kicks over it, yellow zinc chrome, it kicks over it. Feeling maybe slightly ambitious. <laughs> I shouldn't, but. All right, hold on. Since I've got your undivided attention. Just gonna do a smidge, just a tickle. <laughs> Hold on, we'll get you. Probably pushing speed too much because that's not all cured and set up properly, but you could also flat it, but it's, you're, gonna, you're gonna defeat the whole purpose here. Let me see if I can do this. It's a good, it's a good dry run for me. And, and again, it's, it's all fixable and workable. So I'm not worried. Did I miss anything mixed with gray? Mixed with gray gives it that nice oxidized metal look with the glint still pops. Yeah. That's what I was after. So again, this is for non, for not a natural metal finished bird to achieve the chipped pop of that with, because understand that what you guys are going to require, if you go pure metallic in like an outcloud or something like that, Technically speaking, you're laying down, you're, you're laying down or you're sanding down, first off, probably in the high 2500 range. Am I wrong in that? 3000 grit on the plastic, going with the gloss black primer, which is a gloss surface, which is ice skate smooth, to outclad smooth that to get that. At that point in time, when you're going to chip on that type of a surface, if you're not familiar, and what I'm always trying to emphasize with this, because I see a lot of guys try to express that part of it, it's an ice skating ring. You think this was delicate and hard for me to do. If that was a gloss underneath, a glossy-esque type thing, I did a 1000 grit with the primer with the metallic paint in it and with no sanding on top because I got a little bit of that tooth. So that gives me that, that chipping, but I've got the metallicness to it to get the glint, which is all you want is the hint of the glint. You just want a hint of it. You just want the glintiness of the hintiness. Does that make sense though, guys? Is that like understanding what my end game is this, you know, versus my end game is, is, is not, you probably know, yeah, this guy, my end game is not that I'm not doing that. So what I'm doing is, is this kind of stuff in here and maybe not even to that extent there, but you're also seeing the sky blue reflected off of that. And I bet if you photograph this dude outside, you could get some of that too, but let's see what we got. Let me see what we got. Let's go that yucky brown color. Okay. Got motivated for a minute. This will be quick. And then we'll talk about what we're talking about. Oh, don't forget you had to make that announcement about your upcoming uh, reassignment surgery. <laughs> who's, oh, who's getting reassigned? I don't think I've used these guys either. Hold on. Oh, it has been open. Okay. But let me do this. So this is that kind of that browner Air Force, U.S. Air, Army Air Force. Um, Olive drab. You can see the, the colorway. FS319. Pretty sure this is this is the proper one. Because there's this is 41. I think 41 is we'll, we'll do multiples because again, if I don't spill anything. So what I want here is is okay. I'm doing this dude first, and then I think 41, fresh 41 gives you this guy which is which is this feller that makes sense guys it's kind of exciting stuff i won't lie i won't lie and then you got the yellow underneath should pop your greens up a little bit should give you a little bit of a bump 
I'm just making sure that this paint is nice and crispy mixed. Now it's a good day. We've done some good stuff. We did some good work. And we'll spend 10, 15 minutes with in closing arguments. The sun is starting to rotate over. Okay. Let me get that mixed nice and good. Okay. Let's get a little zoom, zoom, a little zoom, zoom. A little plop. We don't need much. We just need this, just a test spray. Because I don't think the airbrush is, is, is as much as I've used it today is going to do what I need it to do properly. Now, I, again, I will reiterate, I believe I'm going too fast. So just so you know, this may not, we may pull up the yellowish too much kind of a thing, but let's just see. Okay, that's actually a fresh runoff. Yeah. There you go. Slightly hair too thin, which is good. Good, good position to be in. kind of fun that's why we're here okay airbrush sounds like it's working good i put that submission model thinners let me crank the air pressure in okay, this in okay, i don't need much it's plenty okay, okay spray very nicely right away okie doke so let's And I'm expecting the airbrush to give up on me a little bit because it's full of life color stuff, or it was earlier. So I'm backing off a little bit, so I'm just kind of gently covering that for now. Probably spraying around 10 or 12 PSI. I feel like the airbrush is fighting me a little. I can feel it. Like it's not pushing that paint through. So it's, it is probably a little bit in that conversation of, of jamming up a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna leave some of that yellow exposed there just for testing purpose. I'll show you what I'm gonna do here. Again, it might just pull up the yellow and we may just all be back to square one. It's okay, no big deal. Because again, I think I'm pushing the, the this light color. Probably needs a day to do that. I'd pro and the other thing is I would, to be truthful, slow it down a little bit. It's, it's cool, you know, get the slow song on, dance that one out. Give it some time. You know, truth and you're gonna be doing the whole thing too, so it's it's it'll go through the whole thing. Okay. Um actually let's let's let that sit for a second. With the yellow underneath, it goes more green, so it's not as brown. And so again, to the color primer conversation, you will see that a little bit. You could probably, if you're bold and brave, and I know guys like Chris, you can definitely do that. Is uh, if you're using the system at all, is is I kind of like where we are with this is you might put a drop of a pick a pick a reddish color a reddish brown maybe mix in because of the yellow zinc chrome it's going to shift your top color which you see it doing here uh, already is pull that over to you to more of a red brown like your original kind of idea here and you'll see what i mean by this now i can do this with the oils too but you can see it's not quite it's not really you can see how red our sample is you could you could tweak that too Again, this is why we test, why we practice. It's no big deal. This is a nothing model to me, so I don't really care. But moving forward, that's what I would probably do is pop, put a pop of orange or, or, or like a like a pink or red in there too, to pull that more into a red brown color. 
I'm gonna let it sit for a minute. It's clean. And we'll go. I'll hustle. I will hustle. Everybody good though? Everybody hanging? Doing good? Get that speed ticket. <laughs> yeah, my airbrush is, is, I can tell it's kind of like, okay, that's enough for today. <laughs> like, dude, you need, to, you need to stick with one paint and stop messing around. But life color and mission are both water based, so it is it isn't a huge jump. Whereas whereas Vallejo, because it's a vinyl, it's a little bit more plasticky. You you'll start to get more fight with that versus other things. I should probably get one more 0.3 airbrush just to kind of run stuff through. That's okay. Good. I'll clean all these. I'll break all these down and clean them up really good too. Between, we did some good stuff though because I, I think I validated some some things I was thinking about. Okay, so remember, there's no there's no separation between life color and mission on on the plane. So there's there's only chipping fluid between the between the metallic gray primer and the yellow. So this one is using mission's erasability elements, if you will. That whole thing. And one final pop here, just to speed life up. And we'll get to the really good part, actually. Question, are those machine guns under the, yeah, they're 20 mil cannons. 420s on the belly, and in the, I've got the A model with the no turret. Uh, early development of the Black Widow had a buffeting issue with that top turret. Uh, as it rotated around and the aircraft was in a dogfight, it would buffet the plane. Because the, the the, the air wash off that top bubble turret was causing some problems, so they had to kind of tweak some things, I think. So this is an A, P61A. Came out in OD over gray at first, and then they went to the black. But we're gonna split this down the middle. We'll do black over here, and we'll do OD over here. We'll do gray on the belly, and then black on the belly. And then we'll do a gloss black, too. We'll do some things. There's a few of you guys wanting to do some black stuff, so we'll begin with that. Nice to be able to join the stream live again. Hello, Alex Bissett, thank you, bud. Have to go, see you later, Paul. Okay, uh, let's see here. Yeah, I'm at the three hour limit. I'm pushing it. <laughs> I know most of you guys got to go eat back east with all that stuff. I think Nog took a nap, fell asleep. Zal never showed up, so he's probably didn't even know the stream was on. It's been uh, probably messing his schedule up. I think maybe Zal might have had, might, Zal might have been doing uh, Singapore uh, Army duty. I think he posted something too. He might be doing some stuff. He might be busy. Okay, let me just add some paint in that guy. Okay. Same chip and brush, same thing of water, same idea, same concept. I think I'm going too fast. No guarantees, no promises. Okay, let me, let me dry this pressure pretty good. Let me get my little holder here. Okay. All right. All right, we good? Let's see what we get. Slightly too wet. Yeah, I think we'll pull up a lot of the yellow. And I, there's almost no paint on the wing root up here anyway, so it's kind of cheap. Yeah, the, the mission paint usually needs another 15, 20 minutes. I'm going to, I'm just continually drying out the, it's chipping okay, but you can see, I mean, I'm, see that? I'm just, it's like a, just a gentle chopstick hold and just, just flicking that like a feather, a little bit of a dampness to the brush. doesn't take much, but there's almost no water employed. Let's go kind of cross hatch. And what I mean by that is aircraft frames are, you know, 90 degree framing underneath. You get kind of, you kind of create that framing a little bit. I'd probably employ a different size brush as well to get in kind of these tighter spots. It's kind of moving around a little bit, see what we get. And I probably could have put more metallic in the gray primer paint, but I think the principle of getting that glint to pop, it worked. 
What I'm not getting is, is the yellow. So probably what I'd have to do, I might have to seal some of that life color. Let's set up a day or two. Looks like I lost maybe a little bit there. So the thing with the mission that, that's really nice is see how delicate these chips can be. You know, I'm getting a little yellow there, which is nice. It's almost a chemical sand. It's kind of a it's kind of a scrub sand off. So I'm just getting a smidge of that yellow there. That's good. That's kind of 70 second scale stuff. It'd be a little bit easier if these flaps are like open detail flaps. You know what I mean? Like it's the the textural element of that's a little light. And I didn't really go super opaque on the paint. You know, I just kind of quickly just scratches. And actually, actually, what I'm seeing now is, as I get into the, the the deeper paint here, it's had a few extra minutes to dry and cure. This probably need another 15 to 20 before I really should attack it like this. So just just understand that. And notice the brush. I'm still trying to go 90 and 90. I'm trying to go this way and this way. Just tickle, just a tickle. And the brush is basically bone dry, guys. So just remember that. If I, if I was to, I don't really want to demonstrate too wet, but let me just, so I got, you can see the water there. So what I'm also going to do, because this is a test in the demos, I'm going to let this all set up for a week or two, then I'll, I'll sand all this back down and buff it all back out. So you can see when you get a little bit more water, you get obviously a little bit quicker on the on the chipping. So I'm getting a mix of yellow in, 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 in the metallic gray underneath. Assuming these walkways are pretty well used. See, this is what happened. The brush is a little bit too wet. And I'm just kind of showing you how it's cutting through. It's actually pulling up some, it's actually doing a dual chipping where you're getting kind of, you see some yellow spots and you see some of the, some of the chip metal. So it is the, the, the mission's pulling the yellow off the, the Vallejo underneath the Vallejo chipping medium. Trying to get a little delicate, little. Yeah, so it's so there's a couple things and it just I, I was a little bit too heavy handed with the Vallejo chipping medium. It's probably my main thing. And the other side of this, I'm just I'm just hustling to show you guys the technique right now, because I know some of you have been really waiting for this kind of stuff too. But see this beautiful yellow popping through, you just get that hint of zinc chromate through the through the wear and tear of the paint. And see I'm kind of cross hatching that, so I'm kinda of, you're starting to build sort of a structure underneath a little bit. So my brush strokes are, are in airflow and then 90 degree. And that's how you get that kind of aircraft chipping, you know, flat surfaces like this. And so the panel lines are helping a little bit, you know, it's probably, you know, that starts to, but also see how the, see how the brush has burnished the mat. You can see that this OD starting to darken up. Actually, it looks like a cast uh, cowling there with that sanding I did. That's funny. And the cowlings are blue tacked down. They're not glued on or anything like that. So that's why the gaps are what they are. And I probably, if this was mine, I would have cut off the flaps and done an open, you know, get some photo etch in there and some other things too. So it looks like I lost a little of my glint though. 
that I had before. Yeah, there it goes a little bit, yeah. Yeah, so like I said, I can, I can bump the Metallica, reduce the Vallejo chipping medium, and just give it more time. Are those three changes for, for the rest of the model, but I think overall, that's pretty sexy. You know, for kind of a gritty wear and tear in 70 second scale. Just a little bit on the cowl. You don't need much. You don't need to, you know. I desperately want to do oils on this, but let's cut the kill the stream so we can get to the uh, or kill the, the demo so we can get to the to what we're talking about earlier. Because I do want to talk about that. But that's a pretty good round of stuff, my friends. Um awake the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> you lie. I know you I know you dozed off. <laughs> Okay, what else? Go straight to question. How, how, Mike, how different do you re reckon the DAC Panzer IV would be if you had mission paints? Well, that's a good question, Jim. That's a really good question. Um, I think if you looked at, I don't, uh, let's, that's a, that's a good, it's a good it, we'll, we'll take two minutes to answer that. That's a good, that's a decent question of, of, of uh, workability and all those conversations. Yeah, so add more metallic, uh, less Vallejo chipping medium. Yeah, just just let this let the cook let let it simmer longer, so so it reduces the the sauce down better. To use a cooking analogy, <laughs> let me clean the desktop up a little bit. It's tank art one, right? Did I clean that brush? Okay, good, good. Okay. All right, so everything's kind of set. Okay, cool, cool beans. Beans, you get out of the way, my friend. Because I need space. <laughs> a lot of space. Water out of the way. Uh, and I'll pull up Tinker one for two seconds. Answer you, Jim. There, put that back over there. Yeah, I need some desk space. And I don't even know how I'm pretend to film this dude. <laughs> it's not even gonna lie. Okay, what do we got here? We can go over here. Get out of the way. All right. So, our Jim had asked. Let's refresh it a little more. Real quick. Oop, open right to it. Okay, so that's a life color base. Life color sand, initial pass hairspray. Don't think I had too much trouble. I had a little bit of trouble back here where the, where the I started to play with some of the lacquer thinner removal. So there's a combination of stuff going on here. Yeah, because I talk about the lacquer thinner removal right here, the HS proven it's worth. Because um, the hairspray was, I chipped up the back of, of these things back here. Um, and then I switched over to a lacquer thinner over life color. So this is an interesting conversation because it probably, I don't know if I, how, I haven't read my words in a while. Um, I just probably would have not used this and it would just basically, this would have been water if this was a mission models paint job, which is what you saw in the Cromwell and the Stug. So not much of a, of a technique difference because while the brush head, this is an older one, I probably don't even know if I have it anymore. The lacquer thinner tends to destroy these pretty good. Um, but you can see when you study this picture on 118 of Tinker 1, that is nearly dry. And so when you constantly see me talking about that on video, when you're using your your, your wear and tear chemicals, your water, your, your thinners to rub off, 99.9% .9 of the time, that brush is pretty much almost dry. You just need a little bit. It doesn't take much. These paints react quickly. They're sensitive. It's a delicate scenario because once this is all done and, and then it resets back up, it then rehardens into full blown paint job. So yeah, yeah, I do totally need the space. I don't even know how we get this on camera. <laughs> Low little power mode. Um, but anyway, not much would change. The lacquer thinner would be a water. Uh, I would get pretty much the same kind of look. Uh, there's a mix of hairspray chipping and you see the hard edge chips in here a little bit around the, the, the Jimmy Jams on the back here, the exhaust and stuff like that a little bit. It's kind of a combination of two effects, so it's pretty cool, but yeah. 
Uh, and I do plan a new Desert Africa Core build in the future. It's, it's not soon, soon, but it's coming up later this year. I do have the project and stuff ready to go. All right, let me get this guy. Before time, before time runs out, let me grab this dude. Okay. See, I don't even know how I'm going to put this on camera. <laughs> this, is, this is sick. <laughs> cray cray. All right, let's see here. How can I? Okay. So, boy Jeff Longman in the chat. Um, my iPhone's probably not going to do the best job with this. This little test set up there. You can see the yellow iMac. It's a cool color. It's nice gold. So what this is, my friend, it's a lot of work. It's going to be a lot of work, Jeff. I might be cursing you later on. So there is a, a whole realm of, um, in the mecha world, of you know, Japanese sketch artists and designers that, that do their thing. And they, they, you know, with Instagram and social media, uh, there's a gentleman, I don't have, I'll link it up after that. Uh, I'll, I'll put, I'll put the link to his IG, the original artist, artist guy, and I'll put up loot box as well and in, in yours too, Jeff. But, um, I'll do that in the description. Oh, I forgot about that part, but Tosa, Tosa Shin San is a Japanese illustrator, concept designer kid. I don't know who he is uh, beyond that. Um, and has done a lot of redesign in the Gunpla world, the Gundam world and stuff like that. Um, and so uh, what's happened here is his popularity, in other words, he sketches up these these redesigned Gundams and Gunpla, if you will, Xeon suits and everything else, those are familiar. Um, this is a Zaku 2 leg in 135th scale, if, just in case you're wondering what this, this is. Um, it's one that's the right leg. Um, and I have it raised up a little bit, Jeff, so you can kind of see I've got a little bit more articulation and stuff in it now. I can, I can do some things. It's resting on some stuff, and I'll, I'll tighten that up a little bit. But I, I think that articulation will play into itself nicely. Um, but Jeff, uh, so anyway, there's a gentleman, Lootbox. His Instagram is Lootbox, Lootbox Plus. Took those drawings and made CAD files. He has a Patreon, and you can purchase the STL file to print on a 3D printer. And, and Jeff and chat. G E O F F Jeff Longman uh, did that, and they're they're scaled at one thirty fifth size, uh, which is, you know, um, here this is funny. I mean, the comparison is is is, is humorous. Most of, most of you will know what a Master Grade RX seventy eight two looks like. If you're not, it's that dude right there. <laughs> That's one one hundred scale Master Grade. That my camera's so blown out, like I can't, you know. And you can see the Sazabi floating in the back. I can't rotate my, no, hold on. I can't even get the whole thing on the horizontal shot, but this is a 1100 master grade RX-782. Uh, it's the origin kit, uh, just snapped up. So you can see the size comparison. <laughs> um, if you have SMO3, I'll just pull the Yagdo over. This is the same basic size as the Sazabi and SMO3. This is a 1100 master grade. Uh, Yag Doga, um, so 35th scale. <laughs> Zaku 2. Zaku 2 uh, is the grunt soldier of these dudes. So this is a higher up, higher archy, higher up, more powerful mobile suit, um, the Zaku 2. Uh, but what's different about it, and I don't actually have a standard Zaku 2 in my my, st in my, my shelf anymore. I'm going to redo all my, I plan to redo them anyway. So I don't have the standard design one, but... Uh, so what this is, is all fully 3D printed in 35th scale using the Japanese Tosashin uh, drawings. Um, and then Loopbox offers us the STL file. And then a uh, gentleman such as Jeffrey has, as Jeff has, I don't think it's Jeffrey, but Jeff has purchased that file and printed out. He has the full suit. He has the full mobile suit himself. And then in a, in a, in a Kodokai live stream, um, one of the other mecha guys, uh, we were hanging out and Jeff goes, hey, Mike, would you like to have a leg of this? And I kind of offset, well, OK, why not? <laughs> I don't know how smart I am, but let's see. I can probably I can probably start to pull this apart. Everything's loose and everything is is nicely uh, fitted together. So uh, these are hollow prints, 3D, 3D printed hollow. It's a 5K, right, Jeff? 5K. Um, there's almost no weight to some of these parts. Uh, the toe here is solid, so it's kind of a, a, a heavy uh, base to lock in place. Everything snaps together. It's all just pressure fit together, just like a regular uh, Gundam Gunpla kit. Kind of see, I can kind of start to pull this guy apart.
I'm hooked under there, so this guy's got to come off first. So everything here is uh, 3D printed. That's my first true experience with this size, this level of stuff. I've never really built anything this size before. So I'm just kind of taking the bits and pieces apart here. Unlock that guy. Everything kind of locks together. It's really clever. So there's the armor. So <laughs> my my bits and challenges of and so again these are all hollow. Um, there's some beautiful detail. I mean this is this is a five case, not even the eight case stuff. So um, super lightweight. It's not it's not a weight issue. It's it's a it's a size issue. <laughs> I'll get to your questions here in a second, guys. Um, I see you. But this will be a future mix. I'm not sure what I'm going to do in terms of, I haven't thought of anything. This is all put together. It's, it's got a nice bolt right there. A uh, little knee, knee joint there, but you can see the base structures are, are, are there's some there's some basic general uh, articulation, pretty solid. You're not getting full 90 degree bends or anything off that like you would off of, off say those guys, but the articulation is pretty good. Um, this guy here is, pull him out. The, the 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 solid toe Jeff by the way was a little little it was a little snug, which is good because that fits in there really well. So this this guy here is solid. This one is I weighed this on my shipping scale. This is almost a full pound. It's four, it was three hundred and ninety grams. He sent me his original toe, which is hollow. So these are both the toe pieces. This is hollow. This was hundred and ten grams, and this is. 390 grams and I could feel that weight. So we, so I've decided to go ahead and use this as the base of this is kind of like a statue to give it that anchored weight. Uh, and I have this one, we'll do some demos and stuff. And I've, again, I've never worked something this physically this size. So even though it's 35th scale and it's my normal scale, my main scale, but what I'm gonna do, what I think I'm gonna do, I'm pretty convinced I'm probably gonna do this. And what I, what I figured out when I'm gonna be dealing with this is we're gonna have a little fun, my friends because I have them all here. And I think the form language actually flows together pretty nicely. Hold on one sec. I don't need T34 tracks. This guy, because he's in Xeon colors. I actually think the RSO form language kind of fits. So what I'm, gonna, what I'm gonna do, boys and girls, to take it one step further is I'm gonna do a little maintenance scene with this guy. And I'll get to questions in a second. So these two dudes, this is 35th scale, this is 35th scale, and that's all 35th scale. So I'm gonna I'm gonna combine all these guys together because the mechatros are gonna be like little maintenance spots. So that's what I think I'm gonna do with this because I've got the blue and the yellow, it, it, and all the numbers and everything I've already done from my from my aesthetic perspective fits, and I think this will go really cool together as kind of a the leg of a mech being worked on. And one, there's a guy also on Instagram doing a lot of that stuff where he's taking bits of master grades and making like maintenance scenes. I think it's really, really clever and really cool. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be able to use my mechatros that I've been working on as kind of a full blown scene. So we'll do a full blown thing. This, this is a very long term project. It'll probably take the whole year, but uh, uh, in terms of what we're doing with this and everything, um, it's, it's pretty impressive. Again, Jeff, thank you for sending this to me. Um, Jeff, Jeff has the entire robot and, and Jeff, you can put up your Instagram too. I don't, I don't, I don't remember it off the top of my head. I know you guys use different names, but yeah. So that's, this is going to be, again, you can, <laughs> Rexy's like, dude, there's, there's a, there's a one, 100 master grade foot. So you can kind of see the, the, the scale bump is substantial and it's going to require me to rethink some things on, on approach. Um, cause this is my studio setup. What you see here, this is still going to be the same size setup I have. And I have to figure out how to do that on how to, how to produce this in terms of paint it. It's not a commission or anything of the sort. It was kind of a, Hey, would you like to do it? Cause I, you know, I like how you, how you paint weather and it'd be fun to see you do this. Um, I didn't think it would show up this fast. By the way. <laughs> I agreed thinking maybe this would be like an August or September. So this is the, even, even the knee joint, a little bit of, a, I can't unsee the face with that though, but it, it's going to be a lot of fun. The detail is really nice. Um, he, he did send me some parts on the sprue or on, I guess they're on the sprues, if you will. Um, just come up again. He's a, he's a 5k printer. Um, so this is the, this is a, the, the, the side cover of the, of the knee. 
this he's prime he's primed and started some of these parts but i'll have to i'll have to do some things too kind of see here so it's it's been something obviously 3d printing is obviously coming on really strong uh, another buddy of mine alex clark bought an ak printer and he was doing 70 second scale tank parts already that are just stupid good um so you know i'm thinking about it but you can just see just a smidge of resolution in there but even when you run your finger over you don't feel it so it's more of a visual and once this is primed and filled this is this is substantially pretty cool and it there's it weighs nothing it's a spare but that's that's you know this guy so these are hollow prints and they, they feel really strong even though i know they're brittle um yeah really really cool stuff so i'll put up the links in the description after the video um for Tosa Shin, so you can just see his artwork. I'll put up Loot Box Plus, so you can see and, and or join the Patreon because you can. I think the tiers that actually get these parts because you, you buy the files uh, are around fifty bucks a month. But you, he's already got a lot of stuff available if you like big scale robot stuff. It's really really cool. Um, uh, <laughs> Alex is month seventy six. Yeah, it, Alex is probably, in my opinion, one of the literally the world's best. One of the world's best in terms of armor. Oh, he's nuts. Um, but I think that, you know, it's someone like an Alex Clark who's a, who is a pretty serious scratch builder and, and, and caster of his own parts to make his own individual pieces. Um, for him to get into to 3D printing is going to probably change his world up pretty hard. He's no, he's no joke. Okay, let me answer some questions. So that's what we're doing. Pretty excited, actually. The, the toe will be the anchor. Had to go take for a work walk. Hello, Corey, see you back. Uh, I don't think the wear and tear would be too different. Maybe some heavier scrapes. What are we talking here? Um, Stefan. Oh, sorry, Stephen. I didn't answer your question. You, you asked right as I was wrapping up. Uh, have you ever weathered aircraft that look like it's flown through debris from exploding aircraft in front? Yeah, I mean, you're just probably going to hit a few random spots of damage. Um, it'd be good if you had some photo evidence, Stephen. That's what, you know, if you have a, a P-51 or a, a P-47 coming back from a strafing run that's landed and see some damage, you'll get some strapnel pops through the you know holes in the wings and stuff like that you'll get maybe a, a bent prop if you hit it or something um the i personally know is the answer because I've, I've only weathered a few aircraft in my days believe it or not um at least in the current vernacular of, of, of rinaldi in the version of me whatever this is i did aircraft way way back in the day before the internet but yeah no i've never really done i don't do a ton of damage stuff to be, in terms of that kind of stuff so it's just battle damage and i'd lean on photos for that um but yeah yeah i'm actually really happy with the chipping on that overall that that proof of concept demonstration of technique uh, all that kind of fun stuff worked out really well um but yeah that's that's it's needed the luxury to have make those mods since you have not tied the greater yep okay okay i'm just reading your chat okay i have to go to work call okay see ya uh toes anchor to have it yep uh how long did, did did you say the tubes of paint were going to last you uh which to the oil paint mike forever they'll, out, they'll they will outlast you um agree just as it could have fuel stain yeah probably yeah just steven you're just gonna have to hunt though <laughs> uh you yeah i will need bigger brush so that'll be a fun part of that conversation Corey, and stuff like that so if we've seen a lot of small scale stuff uh, in terms of physical size you know a lot especially in the robot world of you know we've seen both in the books uh on the rail the armor, everything, yeah. I mean, all the various scales of 200, 1 200 esque up through 144 through 1 100. Um, all been the same brushes, all been the same number twos, all the way from the starting days of RSP day one. This will probably be the first time I will realistically employ, you know, um, it's not the one, well, it's, it's big enough. But, oh, here's a King Earth. That's a 1 8 pull up. Where it is? Do I not have my number four? Set? Oh, it's probably in here. Let's see here. Yeah. So probably get into the fours, the fours and sixes a little bit more. Um, you know, my stipple brush, I could probably start stippling with, with my, my halves and my quarters, you know, versus my current stipple. You know, it's not going to be a major change. Not as big as you all think, to be truthful. Because the key to this, the key to success, if that's if the Mechatro is 135th and those scratches are 135th, then the scratches have to translate to the 135th large vehicle too. 
because it's not a scale difference. It's just a physical sheer size difference. But that edge of the scratch that happens on the toe and the foot has to be. So I'm going to be working with all the same stuff, but I will employ probably in the OPR stages, more larger brushes, if you will, for the weathering part. But as far as chipping and scratches and, you know, recreating wear and tear in the paint, like what we did on the on the on the P61 just now, same basic principles. I'll come up with some materials. I think if you look at some of this stuff, you've got some opportunity for maybe different materials, maybe a, maybe a thick rubber toe could be a possibility even that almost looks like a riveted, almost like a, like a, like a heavy duty, like on the front of a, of a hovercraft or something like maybe a really, I've always thought that a little bit. Why, why, you know, why not, you know, for maybe this is, is like tread on tank, tank tread rubber, you know, maybe the front of that's all a tank tread rubber, who knows? I've got opportunities to play with it. I got a, I got an opportunity here to kind of redefine the color structure of a robot because I've never had that chance because this is all neutral. It's not colored plastic. Uh, it's it's a version of a version of a version of something. So I've got lin, uh, leeway. Yeah. The details amazing. The precision, the the snap fit of the parts, everything fits together really well. Uh, really nice. So uh, I'm going to make a few minor tweaks and adjustments. So so Jeff had mentioned to me. Uh, he's already tweaked the the height of the ankle. I think you could double or triple that, Jeff. By the way, you can probably have a plus twelve. I know you might have some strength issues, but in your world, if if you're having the the base stand hold up the whole thirty fifth scale thing, anyway, the legs aren't holding the weight. It would give you the ankle articulation that you need. So I think you need to go a little bit higher because you lock into this notch here with with these guys. So these guys lock into here on the side of the thing, and I was I was resting them up here. So I think you could you could raise that. Yeah, you could probably raise that notch at least that high so it's up there. At least in the minimum. So at least a plus eight. Food for thought. <laughs> but it's all it's a little bit up. Anyway. There you go, my friends. Any other questions? Uh yeah, Jeff has the entire robot. And he's already well through the primer part of it too. He's well ahead. He's in the full primer stage. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, and I think that too. I'm gonna probably because of Tos Toshishin's aesthetic, and in this conversation here too, um, I feel strongly in that there's some form of because if I look at my RSO, so if I come through, this will be an interesting conversation. I'm losing my headphones. So that's colored plastic. I'm not gonna focus, there we go. colored plastic. That's fully painted chipped. And then this is hand painted. So I'm thinking the big dude, because it has kind of that casty vibe of, of soft forms, organic forms, you know, Xeon shapes. Xeon is, is predominantly a cast manufacturer. If we have that conversation of Xeon, Zach and Grunts weren't made out of Gundarium, all that kind of stuff, we can have some conversation because I love the colorways. And if you start to play with the colors of this number five, not being a forestry truck, Maybe I put a flatbed with some mechatrodes and some some maintenance stuff, and do a maintenance demo, uh, a dial. Probably you know get some figures in it and actually do some things. But there's some opportunities here to do a really really cool unique scene. And I actually think the mechatrodes play that pretty well. I think the mechatro form, uh, the way this is all shaped, and everything, kind of these you know if you look at kind of I think there's. To me, there's similarities here that I'm like this actually fits together. If you look at a normal Zaku. Kind of doesn't, you know, they don't really play. It's in this kind of shape language, you know, they don't really play together so super well, but the shapes that, that, that they've come up with kind of does. So, yeah. So there you go, boys. Before all my equipment dies and batteries die. out. <laughs> so there's a lot of opportunities. A lot of, I think this, this would be a pretty cool little thing to, to deal with. And, and I'm thinking, you know, maybe this little trans, maybe this is like a little transport rig that, that, that you know, transports um, the Mechatrol. 
you know, maybe it, it gets, you know, a little, a little bit or something. Get that to stand. So maybe I can have it where I'm, I'm transporting one in and or there's one working on the, on the stuff because, you know, I could do something like that. Possibilities are endless. This is true. Yeah, cool stuff. Very cool stuff. All right, we're way, way long, almost four hours. We probably should bounce. Um, Yako, do you think what is the proper DAC sand color? Is it paler, more yellowish? There's uh, Joako, um, I'm guessing you're from Finland. Um, welcome. Uh, Tobruk is distinct. When Rommel landed at Tobruk, the, the vehicles came over in Panzergrau. They were using locally sourced sand camo, so it's a different color. And then if you go and study the tropen scheme, it's a different color. So the, the, the answer is there's different shades and how thin they apply that in the, in the Tobruk era, the first initial arrival in Africa, it, it can be a really thin color, but remember it's over a panzer gray. So that panzer gray bluish tint is going to shift that color even in real life because it's a really translucent, you know, they might've just airbrushed it summer. Like if you study that summer fast. So, um, what's up, Trace? How are you, brother? Um, possibilities are endless. Everything. Yep. Uh, you are from Finland. Yep. We met. Oh, sweet. Okay. Oh yeah. 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 Uh, office. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say I, I, the name, <laughs> I know the name. So yes, the answer is, um, I think fellow Finnish police officer. Is that you? Is this the right, the big dude, <laughs> my, my host for a minute who, who, who maybe heard a door in, in one of the shows later on at Mosin. Um, but my memory is a little there. It's still, yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, so the Tobruk landing, Desert Africa Core, I tend to play up a little bit of a lighter shade because it's probably just a, a field applied. And then the actual factory tropen vehicles that arrived later on when Rommel needed resupply was a, was a different, richer color. Um, and that's, you know, more of the Tiger 131 colorway. More of a more of a kind of a shift to Dunkel Gel, sand ground. Um, but they are different colors for sure. And then I forget the RAL numbers off the top of my head. All right, I'm gonna probably lose battery here. We'll probably cut out the stream in a second. Uh, back to it. You're welcome, Corey. 12 am going to need to give me a 3D printer. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking the same. I'm thinking probably later this year something will happen. I'm moving anyway, so I'll probably set something up down the road. Um, all that good stuff, too, later on. But this is this is fantastic. Jeff Longman, thank you, sir. Uh, really cool. And then just the debut, this gets out of the way. I think what I'll do is in the two, week, two weeks from now, I think we'll get on this somehow. We'll get going on this. We'll get. We'll probably shift back to a uh, an armor. I'll probably... Combine the two is what I was saying earlier is combine kind of the RSO project now with the Mechatros with the, with the Zaku leg and kind of we'll start we'll start working together on that. That should be cool. Um, yeah, these are this, this is a lot of fun. There's a lot of opportunities here to do some cool stuff. So, um, yeah, very cool. Um, let's see. Every, I'm happy with the camera setup and the iMac and all this stuff and the in the third view, the third eye, <laughs> third leg. Uh, what else? I don't know. I'm going to go. I'm going to go eat. <laughs> Bye, guys. Everybody have a good one. Thank you for hanging out with me. Hit that like and subscribe uh, and see you on the next one in a couple weeks, two weeks.